welcome to America's Hottest Talk Line. Guys, hot ladies are waiting to talk to you. <laughs> Vinegar <laughs> Syndrome! <laughs> <laughs> Guys. There she wrote my name like on the so there's Yeehaw and Greg. Yeah, like she's straddling me and then XOXO. Yes. So uh <laughs> Greg's got a girlfriend. Yeah, it's got that it's got the Mighty Ducks guy. Got that. No! <laughs> yes, but no! He's not the Mighty Ducks guy! <laughs> The Brat Man. Jesus Christ, he was a Brat Man before he was a Mighty. The Mighty Ducks is the end of his career. Jesus Christ. Get off my plane. I think Sony pays you a bunch of money to talk about all their steelbooks tonight. This is a movie I didn't think I'd like as much as I did. I know it was like really popular because it like won some Oscars and whatever, but... Um, Dibby does death. They actually <laughs> produced crew jackets. Like, the movie never went into production. And then everybody asks about, you know, what's it like being a part of the movie that bombed, or are we still talking about that? I said, look, well, I'd much rather be the leader of a squad of a movie than be the lead of a movie in the summer of 87 that no one remembers what it was. Is anyone even there still? I don't even know. Yeah, we're just looking into it. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I was like, no one's like, saying it. Like, like, really into the story? <laughs> Just, just for instance, like, I mean, they've got all sorts of stuff. <laughs> you can never have enough physical media. Well, hello, fellow followers, and welcome back to the Physical Media Show here on Fan Scene. I am Greg of Fan Scene, and with me tonight, as always, is Rook's Cat's Butt and mm-hmm. Rookie and Tom from Midnight's Edge, my cohorts in Physical Media Crime. As always, how you guys doing this evening and tonight or whatever time it may be? Doing the best I can, I guess. Yeah. Trying what to avoid gonna... cat butt. <laughs> well, that's probably a good thing to do. Yeah. I mean... You've encouraged it too much. That's the problem. <laughs> now it's, it, it, it's where it goes. That's all. Where it goes I, is I always there. Do this routine. I didn't make her do this routine. <laughs> she, she was apparently, before we got on, she was like on the patio staring at my mom or whatever, just through, just staring at her. like, But not like near to come in, just just from like out in the middle of the yard. Just looking. She was like, the cat wants you. <laughs> I just brought her. It's just it's got to be it's got to be seen. Well, yeah, cat's saying something telepathically. Don't know what. Yep. <laughs> well, I'm glad to have you guys here with us as always. Uh, and talking some good old physical media and showing some good old f- physical media. So let's say hi to the chat real quick. And with us tonight, we have Random Brad Creator. Welcome, Random Br- Brad. Glad to have you as always. And hell to you, Tim Hayes, channel member here. Glad to have you with us. And Ace Hanlon, hola. Watch Ghostbusters 1984 for the first time last weekend. Great movie. Now, see, Rook, that's how it's done. Watch Ghostbusters for the first time. Great movie. It's an see, okay movie. See, see, see. see, see yeah, <laughs> we'll start right off the bat. When you right said Ghostbusters 1984, for some reason I was like, is that like a different Ghostbusters movie? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, nope, that's the year because we have to clarify. Uh, that reminds me, for all the channel members in the chat, uh, there are new emojis. And uh, so you can use one for Rook tonight. It's uh, the scale of from Gremlins to 10. So <laughs> we got a new emoji for everybody out there. Oh, is... You got that one or an Emilio Estevez guy or something? Yeah. yeah. You gotta... So. Uh, uh, if you drop them, if you got them, uh, but Hallowfield, welcome. Good evening to you, my friend. Glad to have you with us in style section. Glad to have you here as well with us. Physical, physical media maniacs, the maniac. maniac. Oh, I see an F shout factory in there now too. Yep. Yep. I got Sweet. that. Perfect. <laughs> yep. Yes. I got that there. And what's up, Calabunga dude. Glad to have you with us and hail to you, Brian Barth. Glad to see you with us. Cool Gamer, uh, welcome and hello to you. Terry Scott, channel member, glad to have you here. Says, hi, I can't stay tonight. I have to catch a replay. That's okay. The replay will be up for you to see tomorrow. And then we have Tyrell72. Good evening. Live long and prosper. Corleone Rogue, uh, waving hi. Hi to you, Corleone Rogue. And then we have Anthony Draven. Hell to you, Anthony Draven. And let's see. We also have Sean Cavender. Cavender, I hope I'm saying your name right because I know I – know, I know you're Sean, but I 
I don't, don't know if I've ever pronounced your name last name correctly, but thank you for being here, Sean Cavender, as always. And uh, 4K Cinema, hello to you. I haven't seen. I don't think we've seen 4K Cinema in the chat for a while, but glad to have you back in the chat. Uh, yes, and we ha I did improve the F Best Buy emoji. It doesn't no longer say F your Best Buy because that's what we say to runner now. It just says F Best Buy. So I improved some emojis, got some new emojis. Uh, Definitely had to add the F Shout Factory emoji, so that may come in handy because I may have a Shout Factory pick tonight. Oh, so, <laughs> you can have an F Shout Factory clip to play or something. Or <laughs> so, uh, with that being said, thank you to everybody hanging out with us in the chat, everybody at home, and don't forget to hit that like button, share the stream out, and just enjoy the show because uh, we we have fun here. So, with that being said, there's really not much in the way of. New physical media release news. I think we've covered it in the last two weeks. This yeah, I mean, the only drop. thing we really got was uh, a look at the steel books for Jaws 3 and Jaws the Revenge. They look like ass. Jaws 3. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Yeah, You've never seen like Jaws 3 or Jaws? No, I have seen. Well, I haven't seen all of Jaws 3. I, I took all of 10 seconds into it where I'm like, I'm not going to watch this movie. I'm good. I don't need to watch this movie. <laughs> Yeah, it's just like the same artwork, isn't it? Should it? look like that, man. Like that would be beautiful. But That'd yeah, be cool. No. Yeah, that looks like a shot yes. for the megalodon. <laughs> yeah, so there really wasn't much for news. Um, the only other thing I could say that we should bring up was Bill Hunt was sharing this, so you can go to digital bits and go through there. I guess Lionsgate is taking a poll right now for future steel books. They want to know if we want original uh, art or if we want new art. I think after seeing that, even though that's not Lionsgate, I think the answer should be pretty clear for most people. But don't let me influence your vote. <laughs> yes, uh, I'll influence it. We want the original artwork. Yeah, fuck this so. shit. <laughs> Fucking, exactly. and this looks like AI artwork too. It's horrible. It's horrible. It, it does, and it's like the same, uh, same Jaws mouth opening, just with a different picture in the middle there. <laughs> well, they're doing this thing since Jaws too. Yeah. It's 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 horrible, but uh, I did. I got it here. They don't have one for Jaws one that I know of that's like this. So, oh yeah, it's like the same. It's the same, isn't it? Just like with the teeth and this different picture. The, the only middle. reason I have this is because I bought, just because I'm a sucker. I went and bought uh, the imported version with all this goodies and stuff. Yeah, in the it. front of that's better though. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I prefer just the original. You know, except yeah. for they put this stupid sticker on the front. right in the middle there too. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I guess we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I know what it is. Yeah, but uh, for anybody who wants to vote, there's the I put the I dropped it in the chat there. There's the article where you can go vote, read about it on digital bits, and they'll tell you how to vote what the artwork you want to pick out there. So there you guys go have that. And so uh, far, classic is winning. <laughs> good i'm glad barely but it's winning yeah yes 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 uh and what's up hell to you uh berserker 99 glad to have you and look we got tim hayes i know they don't pop up here on here but we got tim hayes dropping hey. the new emojis f best buy f shout factory nice. grim's the gremlins the 10 and then you know the new fellow followers i love it and physical awesome. oh yes I, we do have the physical media show emoji as well uh so there you guys have it uh nice. yeah so there you guys have it. and yes Let's tim hayes, go ahead I was gonna say, speaking of steel books, I probably should just start off with this uh, public service announcement, huh? Yeah. Well, because I mean, I brought I brought this title on a million times, so I mean, I don't need to talk about it because I mean, I've literally talked about King Kong, you know, yeah, dozens of times, and I have literally almost every cut. That's the Shout Factory one. Fuck Shout Factory. Yep. <laughs> existence, including the imported steel book and the imported studio canal now keep that one in mind because i just got this today and i didn't actually watch the whole thing i just perused it and outside of the steelbook art looking cool don't worry don't get this one get this one because this looks like shit it has dnr added to it Ooh. it has the 5.1 mix no special features except for a trailer and it only has the tv cut as a special feature that's it this has tons of special features None of the DNR crap on the 4K version looks so much better. Um, also has the original soundtrack on it, so you don't just have the choice of the 5.1 mix and like a whole bunch of other special features besides just uh, the, the TV cut. Although this does have the TV cut on it, you get that on here too. So 
Honestly, if you support this version, this is the one I would get, guys. Cannot recommend this. I don't know what Paramount did to it, but you can see like moving grain and stuff, you know, that DNR thing. Yeah, yeah, where like. Yeah, it's years. horrible. It's yeah. horrible. I don't know what the fuck they did. And you can tell something's off about it just from the start. Like it just, it just looks a little more washed out than the Studio Canal version. I mean, they have the original Paramount logo on the beginning, unlike the Studio Canal version, but it's not worth the trade in. Especially that, without the original soundtrack. That sucks. And you can so probably just do work. Yeah, go so go ahead. No, I was gonna say you could probably get the other 4K, the important one from like Diabolic or Diabolique or in Orbit, would say probably still have some. And so if you that would I would just suggest buying it from there instead of the one Tom, uh the other Paramount one. Is all I was gonna say. I mean, it looks like you can get it straight through Amazon now for thirty one ninety nine. Oh well, there you go. Um, so it's fairly comparable to, I mean, right now you can get the stupid steelbook one for 26 when mm-hmm. it goes back up to regular price, it's going to be about that. So I'd say it's especially considering the special features you get, cause they're none of them. They're completely non-existent on, on the Paramount version. And just so you know, you get like extra deleted scenes, interviews with uh, a bunch of people involved with the film. Um, stuff like that an audio commentary uh so yeah like none of that's on here i don't even th- the commentary is not even on here so it's crazy yeah it's good old paramount for you i mean uh, i don't know why they did that too that makes no sense i know which i'm sure we got another paramount title that we'll both talk about soon but it's like it's like in cases like that we'll get something like that from paramount and then we'll get something like what's uh, you know, other scans that look awesome. So, <laughs> and if you can, I mean, Studio Canal, I didn't care for their original artwork, mm-hmm. but I mean, their steelbook's not horrible. It's okay. Yeah, it's not bad. I I've haven't seen even worse. It yet. <laughs> I've got so many copies of it. I've seen worse. I do like the steelbook from Paramount, though. Like, I will give them that. Like, you got this on the outside, it's like the OG art, and then you pull it up. It's the hand with Jessica Lang. Oh, yeah, that's so, I mean, that cool. part's cool. Just switch but, out the uh, disc. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And then on the back, you get one of the other original poster arts, which is great. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I do so like, like that one. Yeah. You know, but on the inside, you get the snake art with Kong. Yeah, the art part, That's you're, you're probably right. I should, what I should do is just switch out. <laughs> switch out the 4K. <laughs> to be honest with you. So, yeah, the art they got right. The rest, not so much. I don't know why they decided to do that. They should have just transferred the Studio Canal transfer verbatim. Yeah. I don't know why they didn't. I wonder if it has something to do with like international rights and uh, U.S. rights. It almost looks like the Paramount one might be from an older scan or something, maybe. Hmm. I don't know what it is. They Because they have all this DNR and stuff on it like it was for an old Blu-ray. Maybe it's like... Uh, or something like, like that. Bill Hunt told us where like he, maybe they did do that scan years ago and the one Studio Canal did is different. Newer. See, because yeah. that's the thing. Yeah. Somebody did say that the scan for the Paramount one was supposed to be a newer one or a new one. Mm-hmm. New in quotations, I must say, because it doesn't look brand new. It looks older. Because hmm. you get much Weird. richer color and much more depth. Um, in the, It's almost looked more blown out in the Paramount version. And they both have Dolby Vision, so I don't get it. That's weird. Know weird paramount for you paramount one of the but uh, uh go ahead. Go ahead. no i was gonna say i have a great catalog and they they do give us physical media but they're hit and miss they're hit and miss yeah but uh yes for those who may be uh interested in that because i know that's one that technically has never been released in the u.s on blu-ray so until shout did recently so this is the first time it's actually been released wide to my knowledge mm-hmm. by a studio so yeah. yeah, I'm kind of surprised they just didn't give it back to Shout to do a 4K version of their other yeah. one. Then I could have well, just been like, Psh, whatever. Yeah, and fuck Shout Factory. But yeah, I got it for like 23, I think it was. So whatever. Well, that's not bad. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, well, at least we know there are other versions out there for people like the Blu ray version. And, and I did just share the, uh, yeah, I, I shared the uh, Amazon one link to the, uh, Studio Canal 
And there you guys go. There's the the good 4K version of King Kong. And just remember, if you do have 4K capabilities, for the most part, 4Ks are region free. There's only been like three or four where that are not region free. So, uh, um, so this is region free. I believe. I have to, yeah, I have to check on the second disc, but yeah. But I think the TV cut and all the extras are on the 4K disc anyway. So that yeah. helps. So that helps it. Yeah, because that's typically that's true because it is even though it's like a foreign release or whatever, the Blu-rays typically aren't region free. They're typically region B. So that's usually where all the special features are. So just keep that in this mind. This one might be it. I'd have to check. Is it from Australia or from like it's from the uh, UK? UK. Yeah. I was gonna say some usually the Australian like Blu-rays and DVDs are region free, even when they say they're not. You know what I mean? Yeah, and this one doesn't have a warning. Usually they have a warning on Amazon if it is. Yeah. So my guess is it's probably fine. They only got nine left in stock, kids. Get them now while they're hot. Get them, get them. Uh, but yeah, there you guys have. I mean, we we've talked King Kong. I know, and you guys know we've talked King Kong. So uh, I guess that would be. Yeah, I just wanted that. to put that out there as a warning. <laughs> <laughs> Which I don't blame you. I mean, that's what this show is here for. Because not only are we bringing on these to show to you guys, but we also any like. We want to inform you about what the scan looks like and all that, so you guys know you, that you don't get screwed in the end. So that's why we're here. That's that's, that's why we don't get paid the big bucks, bucks because we don't get paid because uh, YouTube screws us. This is true. <laughs> this is very true. <laughs> uh, but with that being said, uh, Rook, do you want to go or do you want me to go before you? Because I know you're the lightest one tonight. If he's even there, he's he done fell asleep see, on. Yeah, I can do it. No, see, whoops. Whoopsie doody do. I thought I was unmuted. So, oh, yeah, I could go first if you like. That's fine I mean, it's up to you because, like Tom said, he can do another one since he's got a lot. And yeah, sure. Why don't you do that? And then I'll I'll do mine next. All right. All Tom, right. do you, you want to go another one before? Sure. Sure. Um, Which one should I start with here? Let's do let's do this. This was a good one. Um, I should have brought the other part of it, too. But this is actually part of a box set. But I think you can get it on your own. This oh, is nice. the movie version of the pilot episode of Buck Rogers in the That's 21st awesome. century um, from Kino Lorber. Um, but it's also part of the uh, complete series box set. Um, so I watched this and the first episode from the series because mm -hmm. this is actually a little different. Um, it has a completely different opening, a uh, little sexier opening. Uh, there's a few yeah. lines of dialogue that are sexier and more PG rated than what's in the TV version. Um, but there's also like a couple of extra bits in here and there in this version that aren't in the TV version, but the TV version has like a whole of like another five to seven minutes hmm. of added scenes. So it's kind of like one of those things. But the weird thing is this is in widescreen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, it does have more on the sides, but it is losing a little bit at the top and bottom. Not much, just a little bit, but it also looks 10 times better than the show. So I think the show might've been finished on 16 millimeters. Um, but I'll get into the show later when I get watching it more. But no, this was a lot of fun uh, as far as a pilot episode goes. Um, like I said, there's it's cool to have it just to have it as like a also ran. But uh, of the two, this one looks much better quality wise <laughs> than the other one. Um, and that must be what it is, is that it comes from a 35 millimeter print. Yeah. And the TV show is either that or the TV show looked like it was duped an, another time over. From this like this version might have come from like an inner positive right the tv show might be like three or four generations down the line or something i don't know yeah but just the quality and the depth of color and the you know in the blacks in the tv version mm -hmm. like you lose a lot of the quality like you can't see some of the detail you can see here uh so yeah yeah, it, yeah uh, no it's a great film yeah yeah i was gonna say is the did kino, kino do the tv show and the movie or is the TV yeah show it's all part of one big box set Actually, okay. this is I just I just happened to watch this in the first episode. I haven't watched the whole I should have brought the whole box set over. But uh, no, that's good. I was just curious because I was thinking about if I can buy that separate, I might buy that and check that out. Uh, I, it's worth it just to get the whole show because it's I think it's, that's true. It's that's true. I should probably get the whole show. <laughs> that's true. Uh, but yeah, Buck Rogers was always fun. It was always a good time. So itty, bitty, it's bitty, been bitty. years. So <laughs> I've heard him referenced before sometimes. Bitty, bitty, bitty. Bitty, bitty, bitty. Um, yeah. I've heard him referenced, so he knows of Buck Rogers. I've heard little. the name Buck Rogers <laughs> in some things, sometimes, somewhere. 
I mean, the, maybe, the maybe for right one. now until it's on sale, like the entire box set is thirty nine ninety nine. Yeah, because the the King of Order for sale. Uh, you know, it's not on sale. It's not part of the sale. Oh, it's not part of the sale. That's the normal price. So like, it should be on sale at some point if you can get it cheaper. Because I don't even think I paid that much for it. Otherwise, you can get the pilot movie for only eight forty nine. So like, you no, know, that's yeah, that's up to you. Yeah. yeah. That, that, but it's two doing. seasons of the show, so it's kind of worth the forty bucks. I mean, it's a lot yeah. of episodes. I was wanting to pick up the Kolchak uh, series, because do, uh, do uh, I don't know if you ha- you don't have the Kolchak series, do you? Did no, you? I don't have that yeah. one yet. I was curious because they they had the Night Stalker and the second one, which I can't remember the name on Blu-ray, each you know separately, and now I can't find them on Kino, and so I was wondering if they're in the Blu-ray set. So I have to look that up. So, yeah, I know we're talking Buck Rogers, but that reminded me of. That, that Kino also put out Kolchak. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that's, that's pretty cool. I mean, I've not, like I said, I've not seen Buck Rogers in years. So, but it's interesting to know that the movie is a little different, a little more PG, a little more sexier than the pilot of the TV, you know, from the TV version. So, uh, how is it PG and then also sexier? Well, because the TV in- version would have been TV safe. Back then, yeah. TV safe was basically like practically G. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like yeah, the line where I'm trying to remember now, but like he says shit for one thing in the in the theatrical cut and it comes off like yeah! in the TV version. <laughs> and there's a little bit more provocative lines that are left out. I'm trying to remember exactly how it goes, but it's like cuz the The ballsy. Okay, yeah, he goes that was pretty ballsy of you in the theatrical cut, but that's cut out completely in the, and they even mm. cut one of the guys getting hit in the nuts in the TV version. They show does, the does result. It, does it, does it cut it half off or it says that's balls? No, it just cuts the whole <laughs> shot out oh. completely. <laughs> and then uh, they cut out another shot where he kicks a guy, a bad guy in the balls, but they show the result. Right. So they show like, it's really weird how it's cut on the TV version. It's like, that doesn't make any fucking sense because like they're fighting and all of a sudden it cuts to a shot of the bad guy close up going oh, my balls. <laughs> oh. yeah it's like all of a sudden, like when did he hit him it's like oh the ghost got the me again oh the ghost oh. <laughs> but then again like there's complete like, there's, there's like extended scenes and scenes that aren't even in the, the theatrical cut that it kind of actually should be there because like the theatrical cut does feel a little truncated in some shots like there's this whole scene between the two main bad guys and literally the scene in the theatrical version is so funny because it cuts to them and she's like, now I take over the earth. And that cuts back to something else. That's literally the only bit they show from that shot. And the whole scene <laughs> is actually in the TV cut. Like it's a whole back and forth between the two of them about she's got 29 sisters and she's going to lose out on the throne. if she doesn't listen to her dad and all this shit, like this whole bunch of shit. You kind of need <laughs> Need for contact. Nine sisters in the throne. Oh my god! Yeah, and all wait, that shit's that 20, left out. Wait, 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 wait. Is that twenty nine princesses? Is that yeah? So twenty nine princesses oh, are fighting Jesus. for the throne of the galaxy. Like, so that's that, kind is, of the, that sounds like a great. So pitch okay, for a so story. so wow. Rook has right. no idea what the hell the story. <laughs> no, is no, he doesn't. I don't know no, what the fuck. Okay, <laughs> Buck Rogers takes off from the planet Earth as a lone astronaut in the year nineteen eighty seven. Through some anomaly, he gets frozen in space for five hundred years. They these bad guys called the Draconians find him, thaw him out, and then send him in as a as a spy to Earth because he's from Earth originally, um, even though he's an un- unknowing spy, let's say, um, okay. because they're supposed to be uh, starting a treaty with Earth. And from there, I'm not going to give you away too much because that's part of the whole story. But yeah. so nobody trusts Buck Rogers, but he's a man out of time living in an I've age that's more civilized. South- you know? I've seen oh yeah. South Park did South Park with the South Park did a whole trying to get the Wii. He's trying to get the Wii and then he's in the future. And yes. You deal that's with sea based otters. on Buck Rogers. Oh, sea otters. <laughs> they even did the opening intro okay. from Sp- Buck Rogers. The uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. That's, that's the music from Buck that's Rogers. Rogers. That's how that's all they used. Okay. <laughs> I gotcha. All right. Yeah, it's bitty, good. Bitty, bitty. it was good. <laughs> and well, <hi. laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'm gonna have to look. I just it. remember from a kid, and I had a little flashback watching this because I hadn't seen this since I was a kid. Yeah, and there was one it. shot in my head of Buck and 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 Twiggy running across like this opening of a ship and sparks flying everywhere, and I finally saw that shot 
for the first time since I was a little kid. It's mm-hmm. like, that's it. That's the shot I remember. And they must use it in like the future intro of the show because I always remember seeing it. So like, it's just been years and years and years and years since I'd seen this show. So it was kind of cool to have it on Blu-ray and finally get around to checking it out. Yeah. I'm going to have to check it out now too. Cause that's, I always remember that's liking it more than Buck, uh, more than flash Gordon as well. So yeah. And, like- and even a little bit more than Battlestar Galactica, even though I'm sure that's probably some kind of sacrilege to some people. <laughs> I thought flash Gordon and Buck Rogers were pretty much the same thing. So like, I guess kind in, my head, of I, in my head, ish. I never really saw a difference. And- they do have a lot of similarities. Believe me, yeah, you're not similar. wrong. Um, I mean, even the bad guys are very similar. The whole idea of a man out of time kind of thing. And yeah. Yeah. Although I think Flash is just him going to space, and I don't think it's out of time so much. No, no, he just like gets picked Flying up, and his, taken out in his face. In his face. <laughs> no, what was he? He wasn't like in the movie. He's a football player. What was he in the original? Was he a football player still in the original, or was he was something else? Wasn't he? Um, I'm trying series. to remember if he was a scientist or if he was a football player then too. I'm trying to remember. Well, he was always a jock like type guy. Because uh, Buck Rogers, they do have they're very similar, right? Mm-hmm. Like in that sense, like. Because even the the newer version of Buck Rogers, the original version, from my memory, didn't even take place in space. Mm-hmm. The whole th- it was just futuristic because he was like in a pit or in a mine or something like that, and all these gases freeze him for five hundred years. Then he's found. I'm trying to remember, but nobody trusts him or whatever. I don't think it has much to do with space. Maybe the bad guys are from space, but it's just more so he's still on Earth when he's discovered or whatever or when he wakes up. But anyway. Point being, like, yeah, they changed this version so it's a little bit more like Flash Gordon in that respect. Mm. Uh, yeah, okay. In the in the in the comics, Flash Gordon is a polo player. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I was gonna say, I knew, I knew he was. Uh, I know in the, we like in the movie they made him a football player, but I knew he wasn't originally a football player in like the old stories and know what it came from before in Flash Gordon. Um, but that's good to know, and it's good to know that uh, the the, t- uh, the TV movie, a theatrical version, is better or has some better scenes than the TV version. It is uh, missing some important up. shit, though. Like I said, yeah, that's true. That's true, though. So that's why it's a good thing to have both versions, <laughs> and that's something you can get on physical media. Um, but also to Ricky's point, Rick, just so you know, back in the day, PG. Uh, before all PG 13 and all that came along, uh, you could get everything up until sex, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you could get some PG boobs, you could get some tons words, and all that. It it was as long as it wasn't sex. Well, I guess I guess it's confusing because sometimes weren't they afraid to have like a uh, what point was it when they had like a a man and woman in bed? Wasn't that like a thing they didn't want to show on TV for a while? Yeah, that was that was around the 60s, it was probably changed, but. I think the Dick Van Dyke show was the first show where they shared One of the first, guy. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because I, yeah, the- I guess that's why the rating thing confuses me. Because I'm like, on the one hand, it sounds like they wouldn't dare do anything even remotely that's close TV, to romantic. Though. But then also, it sounds like well, they'll do anything except for sex. So I'm like, well, that's where the kind of the R rating the used to be. It was between <laughs> violence, drug use, illicit swearing, or illicit sex. Because you could get away with showing nudity, no problem in a PG, as long as it wasn't in a sexual setting. Mm-hmm. And it's the same thing with like George Carlin used to say, you can get away with "fuck you," but you can't say "I want to fuck you." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that's, it's funny you say that because uh, I think South Park even had that with the context of shit or something. And they're like, you yeah. can say in the non-literal sense, but you can't say I want to take a shit or whatever. But yeah, I think you could say that. Or, yeah, like, that was like, when they no, were trying bad. to decide when it was okay to use shit on network television. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Funny that to think one was, about that. That one was always one of the taboo. See, that's the thing. TV cuts got to a point where it almost felt like they got a little more sanitized. It seemed like they were less sanitized up until like 83, 84, or 85. And then when the PG-13 rating came along, I swear it felt like TV sh- versions got more sanitized. Yeah, they did. Because like they couldn't say hardly anything but damn uh, and hell. And I mean, every, even instances of like, God damn it would get shut. They, they, they'd at least take out the God part. Mm. And they wouldn't say son of a bitch. I mean, I think they would allow it once in a while. They, they started to allow it when they would say, oh, you're a bitch or bitchin, but they wouldn't say son of a bitch. 
We, it, it, it sounds like they wanted yeah. to use the words more sparingly. It, it was just like. how the, they were used yeah. too. Sometimes it was really, really weird. Cause one of the funnier TV edits I remember was the hard way with Michael J. Fox and James Woods. Cause I got in trouble in school for using the TV version. Uh, Cause I thought it was hilarious. Cause they used, cause Michael J. Fox is son of a bitch, like 20 times in this one scene. Yeah. He's like, son of a bitch. <laughs> fucking handcuffed me to a bed. Yeah. Son of a bitch. Yeah. And then he tries scene. to get up and get to the phone. Son of a bitch. <laughs> it's like on the TV version, it's like slug in a ditch. The jerk handcuffed me to the bed. Slug in a ditch. Slug in a ditch. <laughs> and it's like, so I to school, I was like, slug in a ditch. And my teacher said, don't you say that and sent me. I'm like, I didn't even say son of a bitch. Now I did. <laughs> <laughs> but I figured I'm getting sent to the office anyway. <laughs> That's cool. But you I know, I, I, am th- I am thankful for yeah. TV replaced words. Those are pretty funny. They could sometimes. say ass, but you couldn't say asshole. Right. Or you could say right. jackass, but you couldn't say, you know, kiss my ass. It was like really right. weird how you could Thank say God. certain things. And it just all depended. Like, it's, again, it also depended on the sexuality of it, too. You know, you know, or I want to kick your ass, you could say. Well, it makes me think Something of Tremors, like that, but... where even in that movie, uh, when they show it on TV, you could see most of the blood and gore, most of it. I mean, not all of it, but most of it. But then they'd like also like blo- they you can't say. The this is what the TV line was. It would, let's run like the damn blazes was the TV edit of one of Rhonda's lines, and it was like let's run like goddamn bastards. I think was the yeah. actual line, and but it, it was like the damn blazes. <laughs> was like, bastards was, was one you could edit. usually say, but I don't like, know why huh, they changed that one. They yeah. well, well, that that is weird because Dragon Ball in one of their edits, uh, there's like a whole bunch of thousands of different Dragon Ball edits. Essentially. Well, and here's another bastard good is one of the more common words now, but before they would. They would avoid even saying death or kill. They'd be like, I'm gonna send you to the next dimension was some of the words. That might just be because it was on a because it was a cartoon, maybe, but that's what I'm saying. But then a later edit, they allow bastard as one of the words they can say. So it's just a weird contrast looking at that. It's funny because you can see a difference even in the TV cut of uh Ghostbusters, because the version that's on the big box set that I have is the 87 TV cut, not the original TV cut which I think was like 85 or 86. It had to be at least 86 because in that version that I have, and I think it's actually later than 87. Um, I think it's more like the nineties because it actually has the, this film has been modified and all that shit in the, in the title. And they didn't start doing that till the nineties. But anyway, that being said, because the original TV cut of ghostbusters, when, when Bill Murray comes out and says, we came, we saw, we kicked its ass yeah. in the TV version. He goes, wow, what a knockabout around fun that was. <laughs> like it makes no fucking sense, but it's like and it's, you can tell he did not want to do the take, and he was just doing it for a TV cut version mm-hmm. because the version that yeah. I have on the Blu-ray now has the "We came, we saw, we kicked this ass" line in it, and I remember that it, yeah, it became okay sometime post 80, 90, 89, 90 to say "ass" because Bart Simpson would say it all the time. See, and that was always a big thing when Bart Simpson would swear. Because he got away with some words that we never like he, bitching. He was that was the first time he, he I ever heard like the, the word he was bitching. Like the, yeah, he was like bitching. the character that could swear, right? On the show. Yeah, you know, he Especially. had his whole like, I'm Bart Simpson, who the hell are you? He said damn a lot. He said ass. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, that's know, perfect for so. a kid character because that's a, when kids learn when around that age learn a word, they'll say it a lot. So my my mouth hit the ground when I'm watching Ninja Turtles in nineteen ninety and we hear damn within the yeah. first the yeah. fucking two minutes yeah. of the movie. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's a hardcore yeah. word. And then you got Raph literally yelling, damn! Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, God is damn! Then you got Mikey yeah. later on going, what are you doing? You let it blow right by you. Just ninja kick the damn rabbit. Do something. Yeah, just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I remember hearing those words. That's And then, of course, we had the parents up in arms and they had to kidify it. Well, they even have <laughs> Lee, uh, they be up in Lee, arms Raph about says it? bitching later on at the end of the movie, too. Yeah. yeah. Bitching. Yeah. So they get funny. up in arms, man. That's what they did. They got mad because of swear words and the actual use of actual ninja weapons they used in the movie. So oh, in the God. second movie became more kid friendly, and they weren't even they couldn't even use their weapons. No, <laughs> what? No, you're right. They got the combat, now. yeah, okay. And the and the stupid shit in the toy store, and mm-hmm. they were using things I mean, around. They used their, right. they used their weapons. Yeah, they used their weapons for the majority of fight scenes in that first one, and then they didn't yeah. use them like at oh, all. Oh yeah. Things. You're right. Holy crap. I didn't think about that. Yeah, the yeah, one, well, that's even... because partially because the movie itself and not to go down a rabbit hole because we need to move on anyway. That's yeah. right. <laughs> um, the movie itself was licensed separately from the other shit. So when they initially okay. started doing the movie, it was going to be more like the comics. 
Like mm-hmm. they were always the whole plan from the start was to stick, uh, you know, the guys that used to work with like Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan over at Golden Harvest. Those guys were the stuntmen that were in the turtle suits. Like that was their whole thing was, oh, we'll just get some of our stuntmen and throw them in a turtle suit. They didn't realize how much more work it was going to be than that. But that's a whole nother story. But yeah. So like, yeah. And then when the the, the, the the cartoon and the toys got huge, they adopted some more of the turtleisms that we know, like the pizza and the different colored headbands, a little bit more of the, I mean, the personalities are kind of a mix of both, but in the comic, they don't really have much personality. Like it's really hard to differentiate them other than Raph because Raph is always kind of just Raph is the closest to the comic version mm-hmm. where the rest of them are kind of closer to their cartoon versions cartoon versions basically yeah 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 because that was a thing on tv they didn't want raf to be aggressive they just wanted him to be a goofball yeah so it's kind of bumps in like a different character entirely they say he's rude right like so he's sarcastic and rude it's like yeah but that kind of bumps into mikey you know like that's that's a different character that he was not goofy if it's goofy not because of how he's acting because of who he's around well on the fine line is mikey just doesn't take anything seriously right like that's his gimmick yeah Yeah. anyway yeah all right well uh great talk there and on the buck rogers and everything and with that rook are you want to go ahead and do yours uh yeah i'll go do your first one Mm -hmm. will this be the hell shirt you got on that's uh, my shirt. Sure. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Mm-hmm. I thought it was a short circuit shirt for a second there. <laughs> it's I was going to give you some mad props, but I'll still give you props because it's, it's Greg's shirt. It's one Greg's of my shirts, the physical yeah. media related show here. So it's good. I love go. 80s horror. Why do you always have fucking half eaten food on your bed behind you? <laughs> you are well, such a lily white boy. <laughs> what the fuck, man? He's I'll making us look day. bad. I'll leave the rest of the show, okay? You know, so I was gonna the guy I don't want to be too full, so I changed my mind. Every week, seriously, go back through the whole show, Greg, and do a screenshot of every fucking show. He's got half eaten food somewhere in the fucking picture. <laughs> yeah, that white boy, that's true. That's true. I should probably have them off Damn. out of the shot though to uh for the future. Well, it's too, late too late now. Too late now. You just make me want pizza. You just make me want pizza. We talked Ninja Turtles. Now we want pizza. You know what we're trying to concentrate Ninja on Turtles. the tit above of the pizza. Here's Eleven yeah. o'clock to the pizza. Eleven o'clock look, to the pizza. Look at the titties. Here's a Ninja Turtle <laughs> in the white guy's body. That's uh, all we got there. But uh, fuck. Nope. I picked Gladiator to check out again. <laughs> the, the last time I saw it was, well, this is like a 2000s movie, right? Uh, I probably saw it when I was in middle school. And I liked it. And rewatching it now, I feel like it's because I've seen Rome. I've seen Spartacus. I've seen Game of Thrones. I would prefer stories like this be in the longer format, maybe. This man i'm on a streak of not liking a lot of publicly loved movies man uh i'm gonna have to back you up on this one this one's an overrated ridley scott film like there's a lot of elements in it there's acting in it that's good there's uh some things they're trying to really take seriously there's political parts that are touched on that don't really go any they don't go enough into it as i would like uh you know him the trauma of him having to deal with his family being killed, I feel is just kind of brushed over a bit. I mean, he shows some concern, yes, and he tells you, you know, you killed, you know, my murdered my son and my wife and all that stuff, but there's not not enough to simmer with it. The movie's like two hours long, and I feel like it's just not enough time or what they chose to use the time for the movie. They didn't focus on the right stuff. Can you do a direct cut of this? For some reason, I think on my 4K, there's a direct You're probably right. I think there is one on the 4K. The stuff they chose it's to not a Ridley on, Scott movie. If there's not, there probably is. I'm sure, but uh, I, don't know, I feel like the stuff they chose to focus on wasn't wasn't good enough for this. Uh, the type of story they want to tell is wants it to be some kind of epic. It seems, uh, but even the king or the emperor, the uh, phoenix character guy. Well, so he's, well, he's they call him Caesar, which I learned that's more of a title, not just Julius Caesar. Um, yeah, like, Caesar's. Okay. Like- Called the ruler of Rome. Yeah. I think it just translates like, to king. Yeah. I, yeah. I wish that there was a lot more time with him to really get 
why he's like this because it just seems like a cartoonish attempt at trying to make a bad guy the way that they have him. But I feel like it's because we don't have enough time with him. And well, so according to Ridley like, Scott, he's not a bad guy. He's actually well, a you good know, guy. You know, an antagonist, <laughs> whatever. You know what I mean. <laughs> no, uh, I mean, he's retroactively <laughs> come back and said he's not a bad guy. <laughs> but it's like, well, so he says that he wants to rule Rome and he wants to free the, the people. But like, there's no actual actions that he does in the movie that support that. So I don't, I don't know. I'm just like, I don't He just wants to dissolve the Senate. Can you go more into that, please? And like how that would affect anything no i don't know i feel like they just chose to focus on even the action it's just like yeah it's fine but i wouldn't i wouldn't call it a colossal a colossus of rousing action like there i've seen i guess i'm tainted by seeing too much stuff that shows both a better political angles of this stuff and action this is very overrated for the hype people give it i feel like this is a very normie movie that people go, that oh, gladiator, that's the one with that guy. And he says, are you not entertained? You know, that's what it comes off as to me. I know or, it's not a popular like, opinion. Like, yeah, but, but I like, agree like when you. people like when people would ref like it, when a normie references karate kid, they go, it's wax on wax off. And it's like, it's more than that, you little shit. But with this, it's like, you know, they go, it's, it's not, not any more than that. You're right. It's, uh, you know, are you not entertained? OK, well, it is generic Spartacus. Is yeah. Now. <laughs> that's a I good said it. way to put it <laughs> generic Spartacus that's how you I describe fucking said it. it's time store oh, yeah, Spartacus yeah. Man. No, no, you're right you're right because Spartacus they're actually kind of similar like with their families being killed and they're betrayed by their Rome essentially I mean even though uh, with Spartacus it's a little different but still with Spartacus he was passionately against being a slave he wanted to get vengeance on the person who killed him they do really good I didn't see the Spartacus movie this is this is shown in the show too like he's got a fuck he's got character behind there with this he's just kind of like yeah I'm kind of miffed that my family's dead and yeah I probably want to see them but I want to kill this guy first sort of but I'm not really I don't know. Like Russell Crowe isn't really showing this to me very well. He looks like he's trying to. He doesn't know what he's doing to me in this. He's playing I mean, badass. That might sound crazy because he doesn't badass this, movie star at that I've point. I've seen this done much better. Emotion. I've just seen this done better. That I'm just like this is kind of surprising because he's like looked at as one of the. I'm surprised we're not players. getting raked in the chat. Actually, no. rookie. Uh, <laughs> There's a lot of people who aren't like, "Fuck you, it. you're wrong." I'll be honest. Yeah, I a goddamn masterpiece. <laughs> I don't think Rooks is going to get as much hate on this as he would the other ones because I do think, I do think over time that some people have gone back to Gladiator and thought, you know what, that maybe that wasn't as good as I remember. I need to revisit yeah. it now that I got the 4K, but I just don't. Re I remember not even giving a shit about getting the Blu-ray because it was an early DVD, and I remember it being an early reference quality DVD, right? Like, I mean, it was excellent looking excellent sounding i think it even had an early dts track on it which was a rarity so i do remember showing it off to my friends just because of the grandiose you know nature of the film but it is a rather hollow film at the end of the day it is and well, I, not it, much happens that's all i remember and i've seen yeah. it a lot of times when it first came out yeah. there's scenes where they're acting really well and the sets look nice that's the movie to me. There's no, there's not much depth. They don't go into anything. They touch on things, but they don't, it, it just, again, so if you guys have seen the Spartacus TV show, a lot of people give it shit for being extra gory and extra spicy with words all the time, but more what they think it's excessive and trying to be edgy. Yeah, I guess, but they also nail the other aspects that make it, they give it substance in that story too. Uh, the show Rome has a much less gory part to it, but it still portrays this stuff in a really nice way. Game of Thrones, even with the, even though it's not Rome, but it, this type of story, uh, sort of sandals, historical setting, whatever medieval, whatever you want to call it. There's been so much better attempts, even 300 in its own way. That's adapting a comic book. So it is kind of goofy, but like there's more to that that gets you behind it. I feel uh troy somebody said troy or gladiator i think troy has better like way better action scenes much better choreography I, I but that's still this, a shit but that's still a shit movie to me troy i got i've but. never seen troy uh because to be honest it never looked good to me but is this true because i've never seen rose burn naked and now i want to it's, so. it's not, <laughs> it might be true much. it's it's, it's like that true brief, 
Uh, I don't. I assume. I think that's the fuck chicken. Alexander and fuck Oliver Stone. It's not yeah. Much. Yeah. I know. I will say the only good part about Alexander is seeing uh, uh, what's her name naked. Um, I thought Alexander was all right. What's her name? I wouldn't give it. Too I don't much even know if I've ever watched it. On. Um, the chick that plays Ahsoka now, wh- whatever her I name just, is. Oh, I just said that because that's Sorry, what William Freed kids and said. Yeah, well, Brian Barth brought it up, so <laughs> you're not too far. <laughs> I'd say Alexander is a, a much better attempt at this type of movie. I thought and that one's, and that one's way too. and that one's way longer, so you get more into the the stuff that goes under the surface with it. So I think Alexander would be better compared to this. Uh, Troy's action is better than in Gladiator, but Gladiator feels more like it's trying to be a movie. I also don't like in Troy how they made it a movie. That's the thing you can't tell in just a movie length of time. That's just one you can't do in that. I can't believe you invoked 300. 300 is more like Sparta gay. <laughs> well, yeah, but I'm just saying in terms of, you know, what it's trying, it's adapting a, a comic book and in, in that setting, I think that it does better than this <laughs> trying to come off. Like it's like high class drink, we drink your wine with it. Yeah, that's what I kind of mean. I will that. tell you, I saw it. I have the Blu-ray, which the Blu-ray is horrible, by the way, it's Dionard to hell. Mm-hmm. Um, I enjoyed it when I first watched it, but it's nothing I would. I haven't revisited, you know, multiple times. I've seen it maybe two times, and I, I've never really. Yeah, it's. I do think it's an overrated, overhyped movie. I've seen yeah. lots better sword and sandal type movies than Gladiator. That, that's what I'm getting at too, and I, I feel like at the time there wasn't as many sword and sandal movies, maybe or shows. There wasn't as much of that content, so maybe for that reason it was seen as like really good and cool. But now, I guess by comparison, we're spoiled. Even though I still feel like there's not that many sword and sandal stuff. I want to see more that really go deep with that stuff. Those time periods are really interesting, and there's a lot of stories that he wants to get deep into. Too, so. He wants to get deep. Gladiators. Hell yeah. But- but I think hell just froze over Rook because Doug, 1985, Virginia Loves Horror, sent us a 4.99 super chat. Says I have to agree about Gladiator. I saw it once in the theater. It's meh. Has an okay score. Also, I'm always watching Rook. He actually <laughs> agrees with you. I nice. cannot believe it. What record <laughs> mark the records that Doug and I have an agreement on a film for once. That that is great. Oh, it's good to hear, Doug. And just for that, Doug, you get 69, dudes! <gasps> uh, Ryan Bart's bringing up uh, Gladiator 2. Are they oh, trying yeah. to make a second movie? They are. Yeah, you making... didn't know about that? Yeah, they are. I, it's one they of those things that was, that was like a rumor. There's always rumors that they're sequels. No, right? it's That's happening. Good. Yeah. Why? No, With what? No Russell Crowe. Because Ridley Scott's a fucking retard. I don't know. <laughs> Spoilers, he dies at the end. And there wasn't even... <laughs> really, he's, do you think that would stop somebody like Ridley Scott? <laughs> he is a fucking madman. What sucks even more with it, so it doesn't matter that he died at the end, but there's nothing in the story that is like definitive for a secret. Like, stop not, asking no, questions nothing. and just nothing go happened. see the movie. Yeah. It's gonna, it's Denzel Washington, and who's the guy? Is it? Is it I think it's supposed to be about the kid, yeah, the kid uh, from Gladiators growing up, really. Now. Yeah, really? and um, Ugh. I can't remember who's who's playing. I ever, I just remember Denzel. What's I was really surprised Denzel's going to do it. I was like, Denzel, you really want to do Gladiator two? With, I mean, come on, you're Denzel. You, you're I better mean, than that. I don't think just make a good <laughs> sort of a good movie in that setting in that time period that isn't attached to Gladiators. I can't believe some kid it's, died. It's, it's so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> they just they, they they prop up like they they prop this up for, for remember regular remember people. when denzel used to make tony scott movies yeah sadly oh, yeah yeah <laughs> gladiator anyway. 2 gladiator goes hawaiian <laughs> <laughs> that's immediate. what it fucking feels like man it's like this should be straight to video shit why is ridley scott directing this of all people like, well, like you think about it like this fuck? think about it this way that's time that he could be spending trying to make a good movie or a better movie or something, nah, something keeps else. him away from aliens i guess yeah but he's still involved still producing but yeah i mean it's not impossible that they can make a good gladiator 2 movie hell it might be better than the first one honestly they don't have to do much to make it better so <laughs> who knows? Well, hold they the ridley scott thought i may have more to say about him later so i'm gonna shut up now Okay. Okay. I got you. But yeah, that, that's that's my take for it. Uh, I'm I'm surprised, but glad to hear that everybody's more or less on the same board 
with me on that one. I thought this was going to be another freaking gremlin situation here. So. <laughs> nah, yeah. you're fortunate on this one. Yeah, you're right. fortunate. I think gremlins has more cred and Ghostbusters has more cred than Gladiator. So you know what's funny? I've noticed about if a movie has won Best Picture in the last like 30, 40 years, chances are more people are not going to be on board with it, or it's going to be a divisive film. It's true. Because the best true. Best Picture winner never wins. We all know that. Not until mm-hmm. Return of the King. That's true. <laughs> like. There was years and years and years where never, maybe Rain Man is only the other time I can think of. <laughs> I mean, like even Forrest Gump, which won, which is no, a good movie. Forrest Gump. movie it was against no, the it's a great movie, but not on the level of Pulp Fiction or Shawshank Redemption. Give right. me a break. I mean, you Pulp see what people are supposed to win. Like, we, mm-hmm. there's an alternate universe somewhere where the right thing happened and Pulp Fiction won. What the fuck? <laughs> It's true. It's true. Uh, <laughs> By the way, my bed is essentially my table because that's next to my chair. So that's why there's food there. The time. Oh, you've so, been memed now, okay. sir. Oh, yeah. There's going to be pictures snapped and poignant and everything. <laughs> that's designed pudding. And we'll see if there's actual pudding. I, I don't eat pudding. No. Well, you're not, not a real white that. boy then well it's funny I'm, I'm not a real fat boy as far as like what most people are concerned with i don't do the typical i don't like cake i, I don't like you eat most, a lot of fast food pizza i noticed I, like, I, I don't like most candy uh i don't like i don't like most fast food either uh, there's like some pizza or burgers that are all right but yeah, not, yeah I, i'm i'm a i'm a they'd be like you're fat you should like everything no no you eat a lot of pizza hut no, uh, Papa what Murphy's pizza one. do you usually get? Papa, uh, Papa Murphy's, Murphy's or around table sometimes around my area. There's like the only I'd say better tasting ones because then there's like little shitty Caesars, uh, Domino's, <laughs> Pizza Hut. Uh, Pizza Hut is a, a dom- they, they all kind of taste just like I, I don't know. There's something about them where I feel like they used to taste pretty good, but now they just yeah, you're they right. don't taste as good to me. I don't know, so I don't really like garbage now. Yeah, like I feel like they just like on Domino's. They used to always like douse it in like garlic sauce and other ingredients, but now it's like it, I'm like there's like nothing on here like that tastes good. Like what? Why would I have sauce and cheese on a piece of shit? Like what? No. So anyway, we're going on a food tangent. Uh, that's my, <laughs> that's food sucks, is uh, rookie. There you go. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, I always see in your videos pizza, so I'm assuming you get pizza. So, yeah. yeah, that's true. Like one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even in your movie <laughs> videos, you've had pizza. Like. Oh yes, that's that's true. <laughs> that's that's almost a part of the character to sell. That's what I mean, like, that. yeah. So <laughs> yes, <laughs> pizza is my friend. I pizza guess. is my friend. Is my. Friend. I, I guess I'm a Ninja Turtle in disguise, actually. <laughs> <laughs> that's all they eat, right? <laughs> that is true. Uh, but uh, yeah, so look, look, that rook, you didn't piss off the chat tonight with your movie pick. That's a shocker. Rook and I know I'll piss them off with the next one because nobody's seen the next one. So <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm talking about for my pick, but uh, <laughs> my girl. <laughs> to stop, so Tom is getting pizza tonight. Confirmed. I know, you're, you're like, you always have pizza, Rook. You're I already so, ate. You're just jealous that I have pizza and you don't right now. That's all it is, Tom. Uh, I didn't get pizza tonight. I should have, but I got <laughs> steak instead. You'll have it for break. You can have it for breakfast tomorrow. That's okay. <laughs> I agree with Random Brad, though. I quit drinking pop altogether, so I drink I water. Need to. Yeah, I need to. I'm, I'm in the process of trying to have a lot less of it. Uh, yeah, that's where I'm at. But it's, it's, not it's, one of the, it's one of those things where I don't drink alcohol except for like one time a year. And soda is my troublesome thing that just goes good with a lot of stuff that I'm trying to have less of here and there. That was like, that's what the nurse told me. When I went in for my gallbladder, when I had to go stay in the hospital for like three days, there's like, uh, do you smoke? And I'm like, nope. She's like, do you drink? And I'm like, nope. I mean, I drink beer, but I'm like, I don't drink. And he's like, do you have this? And I'm like, nope. And she's like, well, this just isn't fair. And I'm like, yeah, I know. She's <laughs> like, like, why are you at the hospital? Like, he's like, do you take, do? yeah, did you take Ozempic? They asked me if I take Ozempic. And I'm like, I'm not even diabetic. No. And they're like, well, damn. <laughs> She's like, are you sure you're a nerd? Like, what do you mean? Like, that's usually the case that goes with. Uh, but yeah, that's that's where I'm at. But uh, any other final words there? No, no. All no. right. Well, I guess we'll move on to me for my first pick, and uh, allow me to um, 
flex a little bit. <laughs> but this one, the Amy, the visitor from Full Moon Features. This is Charles Band's latest movie that he just released. And if you notice on the back here, which I'll try to get up on the camera if it's clear, it does say, uh, where is it at? Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. Uh, fanzine screams. Uh, it's the ending is unnerving and you won't see it coming. So I am on the back of the case of this Blu-ray here. So you're on uh, on the blurb. On the blurb, oh. on the little back of the Blu-ray, and on their website. So wow. allow me to talk a little bit. I know it's a blurbity. <laughs> yes. So there you go. <laughs> now we know that you're an official fan. Yes, I am official. Um, but you yeah, know, this is actually a pretty solid Full Moon movie uh, by Charles Band, the founder of Full Moon. Uh, this is basically he's taking the whole play on AI. You know, he that, that you got to hand to the full moon. They jump on these trends and they do it quick. Um, so basically, uh, the the AI Amy is and there. It's not played by an actress at all. It's completely AI, even though it's technically Chuck Serrano, the composer. We'll get to that another time. <laughs> he because he created it. Um, but basically, it's about this guy who's like a computer hacker on the dark web. It's very nineties. It's a bit, which is what Full Moon excels at because that's where they got real big. They were like, you know, they made a bunch of 90s straight to video movies. And that's what this feels like. This is like a, a 90s straight to video erotic thriller with AI. It feels very much like a hacker's like, I'm on the dark web, you know, I'm hacking into the system, like very 90s. And uh, this guy who gets paid to do this stuff, he gets this program. It just turns out that so happened to be this really advanced AI named Amy who uh, basically falls in love with him or like wants to control him and everything. And so she like feeds him all this and porn and everything. And uh, there's this woman and her brother who live in the building with him and the girl, the woman's in love with the guy that's hacking, but they also work for him and they don't trust this AI. So it all like, bleeds into that and what AI can do. And uh, yeah, for most people, to be honest with you, most people will see the ending coming. But for people who don't, it, you, it is a bit unnerving. And I didn't quite expect to end it the way they did. But it's pretty solid, dark, sort of dark ending and sort of a dark movie. And uh, the, the, you know, the dangers of AI in the world today. And it was pretty funny because, like, I did get a comment in, in my reviews, like, glad to know you support AI taking actresses' jobs. And I'm like, dude, you didn't understand the review and you wouldn't understand the movie at all because that's, the whole point of the movie is the dangers of AI and what it can do <laughs> and the fact that they created this to show people. And plus, it is Charles Band trying to jump on a trend and try to make a quick buck about it. <laughs> so, yeah, it is, it's a pretty solid Charles Band movie. It's a little longer than most newer full moon full moon movies at 68 minutes because they're they're a low budget independent film studio and they don't have the backing of uh like uh paramount anymore and stuff because they like they used to in the 90s so they get the money together the way best they can and most of the movies are like for 58 60 minutes and this one's a little longer so uh, it was good to see Charles Band make a de pretty decent erotic thriller. Uh, so, yes, it's like I say erotic thriller because there is nudity, there's sex scenes and stuff like that. And it feels very much like a late night 80 or 90s cable type movie. Um, so there you go. And I'm just flexing a little bit because uh, my my blurb from my review is on the back of the Blu-ray and on the website, which I never expected that to ever happen at all. So. <laughs> <laughs> There you guys, there you guys go, and uh, I do, I do recommend this movie. So if you guys get, it's pretty cheap. I think it's like seventeen bucks on Amazon, or you can go over to the Full Moon website. It's a little more expensive on their website, but that help, it helps them out on if you buy it from their website because it gives them money to actually produce their movies a little more than like an Amazon. But it's only seventeen bucks on Amazon if you want it. Uh, if not cheaper by now, uh, but there you guys, yeah, there you guys go. Um, there's my first pick of the night. Uh, yeah, I think I remember seeing trailers for this one. I was gonna, I was gonna catch it in theaters, but it's out. On that. I don't think it was in theaters. Or then maybe I'm thinking of a different movie that wasn't this. Maybe it's it Charles Band. Hey, don't they don't no. do theaters? Okay, okay. Well, no, it's a different movie then. But it made me think of a movie that. Okay, anyway. Nice. Yeah, they're little, they had their own streaming service, which I do actually have. I've said it a million okay. times. Uh, it's like seven six ninety nine a month. Uh, all their new movies come to their streaming for service first, and then they go to DVD, Tubi, all the other streaming platforms. Um, and 
but yeah, I, that's the perk of seeing them because you get to see their new movies first. Uh, yeah, so no, their do, movies. Do they, do they show their trailers on other stuff? Or on Am- just... They're on YouTube and stuff. Okay, well, that, that might be where I saw a trailer. But, and I, assume, I might yeah, assume yeah. that it was going to be in theaters or something. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, uh yeah, they, there's like that the whole reason they create, they honestly, the whole reason they created Full Moon created their own streaming service is because there's no more video stores. Like Charles Brandon said himself, he's like, the video stores is where he made his bread and butter was allowed to be able to make movies and stuff because they would drop like the VHS in the video stores and it would rent and people would buy them and, and that, and now that's gone away. And like the streaming services, like if he streams it on Amazon and Tubi, they oftentimes ask him to edit the boobs out and stuff for some of the newer movies. So he has his own streaming service and that's where he drops all the new stuff unedited. And then he puts it out on Blu-ray and DVD after a couple months. Uh, but yeah, they're very low budget and most people, full moon is one is like one of the last remaining independent film studios. Most people think of them as being this company that probably has a lot of money and they really don't. And that's a lot to do because of Charles band. <laughs> Cause he makes some deals some bad deals sometimes, but uh, I, I'm, I'm happy to support them. I, I've been a fan since I was a kid, since the Puppet Masters. Tom knows that. We love the Puppet Master movies uh, the, and all that good stuff. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, I, but I do recommend Amy. This Amy is a pretty solid, it's a pretty solid uh, movie. Very much feels like a 90s movie. Very much feels like a 90s movie. And I, I really dug that about the movie. I really dug it. So, yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Yes, well, Roger Corman did teach Charles Band everything he knows. I mean, Buck, uh, Ro- Buck Roger Corman. <laughs> Roger Corman. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, th- this is true, Sean Kevinner. Uh, all the good stuff is cut out in Full Moon on Tubi. Uh, you you got to get to the Full Moon streaming if you want the real deal. Yes, because Tubi and Amazon and stuff do ask them to edit out the boobs. They do. Why? Uh, I don't know. It's it's like advertising, uh, because oh, right. advertisers, yeah, I got gotcha. you. Tubi they, plays, yeah, more like I, mm-hmm. which I have nothing against Tubi. I don't. I think Tubi is yeah. a great tool for people and for independent filmmakers. Um, it's just a certain, not everything, because you can still go on there and find movies loaded with boobs and sex scenes and cussing and gore, tons of them on there. But certain companies and stuff for some reason like advertisers they make they make them edit it out and so like there is stuff that's edited on tubi that uh for whatever reason because the advertisers because it plays like regular network tv more than a streaming service so hmm. yeah yeah I see. uh but yeah there you guys have it there's my first pick of the night <laughs> Nice. Um, yeah. With that being Check said, it out one of these days. No, it's, it's pretty solid. I mean, it's only sixty-eight minutes. It's pretty solid. I liked it. That's, that's barely over an hour. Huh? That's how I can easily knock out. Yeah, yeah. It's it, like I said, they, they make them the best they can, and I'm a I'm a pretty big fan. So uh, I was that that took me by surprise when I saw that on there. What's up, Steven? Delete scenes because I honestly I did not know that was on there, and I was I just saw the movie came out on Blu-ray, and I went to their website, and I was like reading through it and i was like wait does that say fanzine were you like oh is there another <laughs> fan scene oh man <laughs> so i was like oh my god i didn't know they did that and then now and honestly i just now noticed it on the blu-ray before the stream because i never read the back of it and then i saw it on the back of the blu-ray right before the stream and i was like oh shit it's on the back of the blu-ray too <laughs> <That's> so... <laughs> <tight. laughs> wow. did you see the movie before yeah. they made the blu-ray of it oh yeah i got to see it they sent me oh. a copy before it even was dropped on streaming. Uh, <laughs> okay, cool. cool. Yeah, sense. I'm not trying to flex or say that. Just that's that's what happened. No, 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 flex away, <laughs> flex away. That's all good. Oh, good for you. How <laughs> <laughs> <hell> was it? <laughs> yeah, I, I guess just, you already answered that. So. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, uh, Tom, I guess we'll go to you for your next pick. Or well, do you the, yeah. <clears throat> uh, did you want to do the other ones first? No, you do the other one. Do the do something else, and then we'll do that. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, I was looking forward to this one, and it kind of ha- kind of has me worried about the the new one that's coming out, but I don't think it's the same people that made it. But uh, I finally got around to watching this. It's from 2019. It's called Memory. The create mm-hmm. the origins of Alien. And this is a boring ass fucking documentary. <laughs> huh. 
that ha- had us hardly anything to do with the actual film itself and more to do with talking head fucking pundits. I don't give a fuck about like Clark Wolf and shit like the woke ass motherfucking people making up a bunch of shit about the movie that ain't even fucking true. Um, you know how progressive this and that it's like, no, you fucking dumbass. Just shut the fuck up. <laughs> so they waste a lot of time on that. The thing I did like about this is they have Dan O'Bannon's wife. So you get a lot of insight into things that he felt and thought that may not have been public before. And I actually got to give Ridley Scott credit for trusting O'Bannon's vision basically and fighting for his vision because that's one thing I did learn about from this uh, documentary was like O'Bannon, you know, tried the hardest to get the movie made from the start. And uh, the studio rejected like the HI HR Giger designs and stuff like that when he presented them. Um, But when Ridley Scott was like, well, he's the guy, that's what the alien should look like. They're like, Oh, brilliant. You know, of course (laughs) it was Ridley Scott, you know? So I give him credit for that. But otherwise, I mean, that's just it. That's more proof that basically the better job Ridley does is when he has something to work with. But this documentary is just kind of fucking lame. It's Um, really bad. I didn't really learn anything. I didn't already know there's little bits and pieces here and there, but it doesn't really have much to do with the production itself. It has more to do with the impact and the ideas of where it came from, which part of that is kind of cool. But when you got all these talking head people, I don't give a fuck about talking about the movie that have nothing to do with the movie. It gets aggravating because they're talking about it through a modern lens with a bunch of modernisms and shit like that. Yeah. I hate when they do that. And it's just, they go on and on about just how diverse it was and Ripley, this, that, and the other being, it's like, yeah, we've already brought this shit up before, but, and just making up all sorts of shit and reading into the movie. That's not there. Like, it's just what the fuck. Yeah. Well, delete a scene says he's seen it and you're right. (laughs) It was a waste of money and time. I was so disappointed. Well, so uh, disappointed with that being said, I can, I guess I could bring this up real quick. Um, yeah, I hope this is going to be good right here. Cause this was sent to me by the creator VC. Yeah. I, you know, I think I have the same thing in my email, but yeah, I didn't have yeah, checked yeah. into it yet. Uh, but I'll go ahead and play this real quick. Uh, let everybody see what, if you haven't seen it. So hi guys, I'm Jim Cameron and this is aliens expanded. Talk to me, Hudson. Multiple signals. Without a doubt, Aliens is the best movie that I've ever been in. We all knew that we had something. If you're going to only be in one movie, this was the movie to be in. I don't think we had seen that in film before. It was so real. It's brilliant. It's so fresh, it's so exciting, it's so adrenal. Let's back them in! Get in there! I want this thing to go smooth and by the numbers. Paxton turned to me and he was like, Oh, dude, this is going to be so awesome. This wasn't just a hit movie. It was something that would really end you. A phenomenal piece of filmmaking. I'd been on a lot of sets, but this one was a next level. In my mind, it was experimental cinema. Everybody thought I was nuts. Is he going to be casual? Is he going to be a monster? He was under pressure. If you're screwing around, he's going to tell you. A little bit of abuse doesn't hurt. And it all just went dark. Six. Remember, short controlled bursts. Just shock and awe. We were all cheering for Sigourney. She goes 100% feral. But she's got the gun and the flamethrower. She's alive. There's still time. It definitely is movie history. It was a great time in my life. Get away from her, you bitch! I was born to make that movie. Yeah, just don't let him uh, do the DVD or the Blu-ray. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's that from the people good. that, yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's from the same people, but yeah. It's from the Creator VC people who did the In Search of Darkness and then yeah. In Search of Tomorrow. But it's not the same director. People. Yeah, this is from Exhibit A Pictures and um, Legion M. And some other weird shit I never. It was. A, it's a fan funded thing. Yeah. Um, Screen Media and Legion M. So I don't think they're the same company. No, I don't. I don't think so. Yeah, because this thing is horrible. So Fuck it this is. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it sounds like it's a really bad documentary, and you're not the only one that seems to think that. So uh, that makes that makes it pretty accurate. Um, it's ninety but, minutes yeah. of a waste of time. <laughs> it, 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 it's interesting uh, to see. Uh, Wait, well, let me let me. Why am I disappointed? You may be asking no, yourself, right? Like, why do I even have this level of expectation, right? Because ninety percent of these fan produced documentaries that we have gotten so far have been the best ones Mm -hmm. going back to the elm street friday the 13th um the ghostbuster one from not too long ago the one that sean did for monster squad was even better than that like yeah that's what i'm saying like all of them have infinitely been better than this this is a piece of shit compared i've got the new gal or it's not new it's been out for a few years but finally on disc galaxy quest one i hope to get to here soon and just what yeah. i've seen of that already looks like it's better like this just feels like a waste of fucking time for just a couple of people to stroke their egos the when was that one made it was like what you say 20 what 2019 so smack 20. dab in the middle of all the fucking, yeah right yeah yeah, yeah. so <laughs> that's see that's the thing is like th- that's what i hate when they go back and relook it like that was one of the problems honestly i did have with the in search of uh tomorrow uh documentary that they they did which i did enjoy the documentary and everything it was a good fun documentary but some of the people they got were looking at these sci-fi movies through a, a modern lens and saying well this was really speaking on this this and this. i am and so then, sick and tired no. of that shit <laughs> no not revisionist history no. pretty much unless it's the yeah. original artists that were involved with the movie saying yes we come out and totally meant like okay right exactly planet of the apes the people vo- involved with writing that movie clearly and have stated without any argument that that was a comp comment on civil rights like you took the concept (laughs) you watched the movie the apes are segregated for a reason it is a comment on segregation you have the darker gorilla apes are all doing the menial jobs and shit like that and the grunt workers you've got the more lighter chimpanzees they're all the 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 scholars, the doctors, right? Mm-hmm. Then you have the lightest of the light orangutans, the red-headed orangutans, white-skinned orangutans. They're the leaders. See, it's all right there. They did it on purpose. Now, if they say that, fine. But if you're going to come at this from an angle from now and you're barely as old as I am or some, you know, younger, yeah, yeah. Fuck off with your bullshit. You don't even know what the fuck you're talking about because you didn't even live that world. I right. can barely speak on some of that shit. I can only speak on it because I have been a scholar of that before this woke bullshit, right? Like, so (laughs) I can speak a little bit on film history, but not from so much experience as just doing the research. And it's just, yeah, it's bullshit. Anyway, moving on. No, no, I get you. I get you. I get you. So uh, don't get alien memory. So they're reading way too much into fucking alien, man. Like getting into male rape and all this shit. It's like, yes, there were certain things in there about that. But like this whole idea of, you know, like they didn't make the, the, the script was written in a way to where the men and the women, they could be played interchangeably. It didn't matter. Yeah, that's what It Brian wasn't did. a matter of like all this, like, oh, we want to do more diversity bullshit. Right. Yeah, and then I, I thought a lot of the stuff that they talked about, it was more of just their thought process leading up to before they wrote it, essentially. So it was like. Like with the male rape thing, it's like it's not, like, it's not. It's not really in the movie, but it's like that was something that was thought of. It's more like alien concept. rape. I mean, like, <laughs> <laughs> like really. I mean, at the subconscious level, what is the one thing that we all go to or hear when we t- talk about these alien stories or hear about one of them? It's always the anal probing and shit, right? There's always some mm. like 
you know, it's kind of like what Freddy, you know, Robert England says about Freddy Krueger. What makes him more scary than anything is he knows what's in your underwear drawer, right? <laughs> like that's the thing. Yeah. And it's kind of like with the alien, like the, the ability for, cause that's how they come up with, you know, the whole idea of, well, how do we get this alien on the ship? Right? Like that's what they kept asking themselves in the process of writing the script. Cause it started out as he, Dan O'Bannon had like the first 30 pages written for years even I think before dark star, dark star came off of that. But then, you know, once everything happened with dark star, he came back to it and said, like, I want to do a serious version of the story and him and his roommate slash co-writer at the time, were trying to figure this out. And the roommate had a dream, like one of those waking dreams, like when you're just between sweep sleep and, yeah. and, and awake. Mm-hmm. And he, he literally shook himself out of his, that state ran in woke up dan and he goes i got it i got it i figured out how we're gonna get the, the alien on the ship he's like what he's gonna fuck him <laughs> 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 and dan shoots up and goes, what <laughs> fuck him he's gonna, <laughs> he's gonna impregnate him there's gonna be like this creature that's gonna stick this hose into his mouth and, and you know he goes through the whole process right like and then yeah. dan's like oh that's fucking brilliant Right. right so you have you know and, and you so they took that's like something but i've heard all these stories before so outside of a little bit of the ridley scott you know fighting for giger and stuff like that that i didn't know before because you know of course with revisionist history everybody knew that giger was a fucking genius no they fucking hated his ass until ridley scott said this is the guy that's the only yeah. thing i learned the only thing i fucking learned like they really kind of treated him like shit and i'm surprised he actually worked with him because because O'Bannon brought him in to work on this, did all this art, and then f- the studio's like, no, we don't want it, until they found a new director, because uh, Walter Hill was supposed to uh, uh, direct it originally. That's mm-hmm. why he's on as a producer. And the studio was against all that shit. They didn't want the sexual imagery and all that kind of crap, and they were scared of it and whatnot. They wanted something more, you know, Spielbergian yeah. and, Yeah. But anyway, that being said, moving on, because I can't recommend it. I've already talked enough about it. That's cool. That's cool. I don't know if you can still get it. And if you can, avoid it. (laughs) Don't get it. (laughs) Uh, I don't think Meryl Streep would have played. I don't think we'd be talking about how awesome Ripley is. She might have been okay as What's-Her-Face, the other chick. Um, Yeah. uh, Because actually I'm not. uh, God, I forgot her name. Victoria. uh, Was it Cartwright? Victoria Cartwright? Is that who I'm thinking of? Is that her name? Uh, I don't know. I the, I know who the you're talking about. Chick. The other woman, yeah. yeah, the blonde from the. For, I just see because I I like her as an actress, but I hate. I'm gonna say this, Vic, Veronica. Sorry, Vic, Veronica. I fucking hate yeah. her in this movie. I'll yeah, be Veronica, honest with you. I fucking hate her. She's a great actress, but she is so annoying in Aliens. She spends ninety percent of the movie crying, and it's and it's like this sobbing, annoying, whiny shit. And it's part of the reason why sometimes women just don't work well in these kind of movies when you do that to them, <laughs> where it is more, it's less realistic to have them acting a bit more natural, like, but you don't need them fucking. It just shows the worst side of women, man. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? <laughs> like what? Now you'll watch the movie and you'll be like, Oh, Tom's right. She is just crying through most of the fucking yeah. movie. <laughs> <laughs> And she just does have this annoying fucking like snotty fucking <laughs> thing through the whole fucking movie. But I do like her as an actress. Otherwise, that's what's sad. Yeah. See, random Brad knows what I'm fucking talking about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he gets it. <laughs> now I'm going to have to watch Alien again just to see. As, as soon as it's and it's from the moment that you have the chest burster scene on. She does not change her. T- she's in that fucking mode through the rest of the fucking movie. <laughs> I mean, she, yeah. Until she finally dies. And then you're like, thank God. <laughs> she's, the, she's the female of the movie. And that's no offense. She says, cause Ripley is the, the level headed one. <laughs> but, uh, uh, Brian Barth, uh, I would have to, it's either Sigourney um, Weaver or Tom Scarrett. It's I like I Tom Scarrett in it. Yeah. Cause Tom Scarrett is doing a lot with what was a little like i mean he's and not just that but it's it's a great ensemble that was the beauty of it you got him you've got yafik koto and uh i always forget his name the the guy who was in uh, 100 oh. movies 
John is it John something? No, it's uh, I know who you're talking about. You know uh, who I'm talking about, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, give me a minute. It's going to come. To me. Um, <laughs> then you got of course Dean Stanton. Harry Dean Stanton. Yes. yes. See, and, and here's John again, Stanton. and this is this is another thing they kept diving into in the fucking documentary that bothered me. Is like the different classes on the ship. It's like, eh, yes, but no, <laughs> right? Like, eh, you're pushing it. Because they make this big deal about it, you know, because Yanfit Koto and Harry Dean Stanton are the low level, you know, nobody listens to them and blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. And they're right through the whole movie. Yes, yes, they are. But so is Ripley. Yeah, right? Like nobody <laughs> listens to her. <laughs> nobody listens to Ripley. And the problem is, is because everybody trusts uh, Ash too much. That's the problem. And Ash is a shady ass sus motherfucker. And the only one who notices it right away is Ripley. Mm-hmm. Right. And then then that's another thing they get into this whole thing about is like uh, when Ash goes to kill Ripley, his whole thing is he wants to rape her, but he can't because he's a robot. So that's why it's like, no, you dumb shit. He's trying to fucking kill her by he's going to throw up in her mouth with fucking acid. You idiot. Is that, is that yeah. why that <laughs> scene was so weird? <laughs> like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> was that why that scene was so weird? Because he's trying to make it look like some kind of industrial accident or something, I think. Wasn't is he trying point. to shove a paper down her throat? No, what he's doing like is that. he's trying to force her mouth open and then he's going to vomit acid down her throat. Mm-hmm. So oh. she dies. Oh, and they was, don't, all, they don't know to... that he's a, they don't know that he is a, a uh, robot. Yeah. A robot. So yeah, then yeah. he can come up with any fucking story he wants after that. Right. Like, mm-hmm. that's a weird phenomenon. Like, I got you. She well, ate that's... something she shouldn't have or the alien got her or. Maybe she so, had one in her, t- you know, all kinds of fucking right. stories you could come up with. I was so confused when I saw that. I was like, I don't get what the hell that plan. Yeah. Was. See, Ace knows what I'm talking about. And I think it's in the book <laughs> okay. and all the other versions is explained better. Right. And that's okay. the other thing is he's going, he's going a little crazy too, because his programming's all fucked up because yeah, like, of what he's doing. I, I thought it was like, yeah. he's not sure how to kill her because he's maybe. Well, it's because of the subterfuge he's being something. asked to be done. I think is from my memory of the, cause it's been years yeah. since I've read the, the book, but like, well, I mean, I interpreted the scene as he's trying to kill her in an extremely non-conventional way because of programming issues or something like, I it's don't just know, so it, it doesn't, doesn't look it doesn't, to make it, it look like an accident basically is what it was I, supposed I, to be. Yeah. I, I was under the assumption that he can't like, he's programmed to not kill anybody in like, you can't stab anybody. You can't shoot anybody. So I never like, thought of it that way. way. So he's like trying to kill her in this bizarre manner because it's not it, against his programming to kill her in this way. So that was what I, I never about. thought of it that way, but it doesn't really make sense. He could just come up with another way of killing her that he didn't have to. To me, it was yeah. to make it look more like an industrial type accident or something that happened. Yes, yeah, I, yeah. I think that makes more yeah. sense. Yes, but I, I just had no idea because, yeah, I mean, there is sort of a hierarchy there and you do have. And this is why I like Tom Skerritt's characters, because he is a captain of the ship who's being pulled in you know a few different directions on what he should do. But it has less to do with the whole hierarchy on the ship and yeah harry dean stanton and yeah and yeah Koto keep bitching about pay but that's just for jokes that's more or less just the camaraderie and the humor of it. it's to make it because there's always those two guys yeah then i feel like they're getting the shit end of the stick and it's the first and only thing on their minds you yeah know, like, yeah exactly <laughs> i don't get paid enough to do this shit Right, exactly. Yeah, and they're all great actors, Brian Barth. They're all great actors in the movie. Nobody, yeah, John Hurt's great. Harry Dean Stanton's great. All of them are. Great. The only they're one I great. really, yeah, Veronica Cartwright is the only one that I would say is kind of the least of the bunch, just because of the whatever it was that I don't know if it was Ridley's choice to make her because I can't believe that'd be in the script. Considering I'd have to go back and see if I can find it, but like, because her character is, they're just supposed to be just basic characters who are dealing with this and the only ones who really are having an, an odds about it is you have ripley whose job is supposed to be like security if i remember right that's her job so mm-hmm. her whole thing is not to let um what's his face back on the ship to begin with john hurt's character and then once they do let him back on the ship uh Yafik koto keeps bringing it up and i think ripley even agrees if i'm not mistaken that they should just fucking freeze him mm-hmm and then deal with him when they get back to earth. But Ash doesn't want that to happen because Ash needs the alien to happen on the ship because the rest of the crew is supposed to be expendable. And he's expecting the the creature to kill everybody else, but him, that's the whole plan. Right? Mm -hmm. So 
yeah, and that's where I think Ash's programming is fucking with his brain because he's doing subterfuge and 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 lying and doing things that a machine normally isn't supposed to do. Right? We kind of see that through Bishop that, you know, technically they're all programmed to be good. So of course, maybe if you ask a machine to do these things they're not supposed to do, they might react that way. I don't know. I've never really gotten a good explanation as to why, you know, he yeah. he he but that's the best explanation I can come up with in my own head. Right. But like, you. again, they get into the whole hierarchy because you got the doctors and then you got Tom scared. Who's supposedly mm-hmm. being talked down to by all the, it's like, no, they're just doing their fucking jobs. Yeah. It's like, good God. <laughs> you cannot look at back at these movies through a modern lens and the, the modern lens that these people are filled, that they feel like they're being oppressed over. They're not being oppressed. So <laughs> it's just like, they're looking back to, I don't know. I don't get it. Yes. Yeah, um, so you have the grunts. And you have the doctors and you have the, the, the pilot who's that's the pilot who you would have, whatever, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. So what the fuck? And the pilot being the captain, being the boss, whatever, you know, and I think Veronica yeah. Cartwright is a doctor. Ripley is uh, the security officer. And if I'm getting this wrong, somebody please correct me. Um, and then Ash is also with the doc, you know, medical department. Yeah. Um, so it's Veronica and him, but then he's keeping everything from everybody else. And that's the thing too, is like, cause you know, that scene when he comes, when she comes into the thing and he shuts off the, the, the x-ray thing or whatever it is, the, the so he doesn't see, she doesn't see what's going on and he knows. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's true. Um, Brian Barth, I and then, say- um, I'm yeah. trying to remember what John hurt his character. If he, I don't think he's medical. I think he's. What was it? Yeah, because it comes out. Um, what was he? I think he had more to do with, like, um, maybe he worked with. Ripley. What do you call it? Where you have where you deal with like uh, terrains and what it would you know all that kind of stuff. Geography, um, geology, or whatever. Geology. I think he was more into. Yeah. Because yeah. I think his whole thing was you know about because I think he's the one that took the mask off first because. He's an executive officer, but yeah, but I thought his specialty was like, because it was like the air was breathable and all that kind of shit, but there's a breakdown somewhere of it. And I forgot where it was. I've seen it once before where it tells them that everybody's job is, but yeah. Yeah. Robert also says he was an executive officer. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. So he's, yeah. Well, like with the, the like Brian Bart, you can't compare because like alien is a horror movie. So like these actors are, uh, you'd like really need a solid core of actors to get to invest into into this like as it builds because it is a slow moving movie up until the alien has and with, like the cast of aliens it's much nothing more, happens for thirty minutes yeah like thirty so you need actors like real actors that can play like off literally these nothing happens for thirty minutes <laughs> exactly. they just talk exactly. and you're right well they're just like doing their job they're landing the ship they're doing they're eating cereal they're well, well the whole thing is they got woke up early like so they're talking about yeah. what the fuck you know like that's yeah. they're spending yeah. 30 minutes talking about why did we get woke up well there's a signal why how long until we get home well fuck and then you got yeah the Koto and harry dean stanton going well when we get paid are we going to get a piece of the action if they if there's something there and they're, they're you know, that main exposition in a yeah. natural way by yeah. having it be their routine they're surprised that this is even happening it's not their normal schedule makes enough sense and and they're and they have their yeah. personalities show through it because they're all in their different moods when they wake up and what they want to do it's like they literally get the 30 like yeah. the 30 some minute mark when you see the face hugger and then it's literally like 45 minutes until the chest burst scene mm-hmm. and then like another 10 15 minutes until you see the actual beast so like yeah. you don't see the monster until an hour into the it's movie doing show as little as possible but build up the suspense as much as possible and yeah. you know the difference between alien and aliens is yeah alien is like an avant-garde horror film aliens is like an avant-garde yeah, yeah I, I think they both film. achieve i think yeah. they both achieve what they're, what they're trying to be as, yes and, and aliens being a sequel it there isn't really need for the build-up because you know you're you know if it's a sequel so yeah, like yeah, and, there's there's differences in the approach already with that, and it's not trying to be like another horror film. Yeah, it's, and I think the cast is great in that because you needed but, a group of people that could come off as like Marines well, and what's his name is great villain um from Mad About You. I can't think of his name. Oh uh, um, uh, in shit, he's in Beverly movie. Hills Cop and shit too. Yeah, Beverly Hills, Hills Cop. What is it? What he plays a great <laughs> slimy villain of yeah. the corporation. He, he's great in that. 
I can't think, think of Paul Riser. Paul Riser. Paul Riser. Yeah, he's yeah, great. He's yeah. great. I mean, the, the cast is really great in that, in much more suits. Like, well, he's basically the ash role, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty <laughs> much. He's an ash hole. <laughs> he's an ash hole. <laughs> well, I'd also well, say, where, there. Go ahead. I was gonna say that's also where you get Bishop, where she doesn't trust Bishop until the end either. Yeah, because it's really different, it, like it, almost like Terminator esque, isn't it? Like, because like mm-hmm. he brings back the robot and the good guy. It's just like mm-hmm. Terminator too. <laughs> I'm gonna say like Aliens. Bishop, is a, you bastard! <laughs> like Aliens is an action film, but in its own way, it is still a horror film because I mean, oh it, yeah, like, it's, it's just a different, yeah, a different, but not more, more like. Well, it's not. It's not like, the same degree of horror film. I but think like, Ridley Scott himself flat out said, "All Aliens is is Halloween in space." Mm-hmm. Right, like it literally is. If you think about it, it, you get the final girl. It's a stalker, a silent stalker, mm-hmm. you know, stalking alien, everybody. Yeah. yeah, just like Michael Myers would. It really is like a but, horror film in space. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I mean, and at the that second time, one, Halloween was the biggest, most commonly known one. So, yeah, I mean, the second one, they take a bunch of people that are built to deal with the situation and they still are getting, you know, picked off one by one. This whole area that we were on before that had a population. Well, is aliens was James Cameron girl. going, well, what if so we sent it, Rambo after these bastards? Yeah. 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 Which is fine. Like, but that's, that's what, what I'm saying. But that's, <laughs> but that's actually a good description of it then, because that's what this kind of is, where people that are made for this just got picked clean. And the more unlikely one that has experience with it and the motherly instincts, all that, like she survives it. And I don't know, like it, it's still a horror aspect. It's just not this, the comparable same type of horror. Well, and, a and different variety. And like, thinking of horror, these things like fuck that. What if Michael to- Bean is very right. much a Stallone esque kind of character in a way. If you look at him too, he, he's basically yeah. Rambo quiet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But he's, well, yeah. you know, he's a good guy at, 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 in his heart and mm-hmm. he's the best of the soldiers, you know, and yeah. he's always there for everybody. He's looking out for Newt and uh, um, Ripley, Ripley all the whole through, way through. Of course, they even have their little romantic thing going on there, you know, two warriors but, connecting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. And, and it's like the concept Cue of the, the Terminator queen, love music. The concept, the concept oh, of the music. queen is, is kind of, <laughs> It's kind of terrifying with it. It's like, damn, okay, that's uh, I don't know. Like, I, I feel like there's still. I don't like when people just say it's just an action movie. It's like, yeah, it's mostly an action movie, but there's still. Oh, it's one of the greatest action aspect. movies of like, all time. That's the difference. Yeah, this is that Aliens is like top five level like action films. Mm-hmm. Like the only like two it, action films that might be better than that would be like Die Hard. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. Well, like, I, I'm thinking of like the scene where the alien and Terminator talks. Two. Like, yeah, yeah. that's about it. But yeah. but you see, what's funny is that as we're talking, I'm thinking of scenes that aren't the action scenes. Like, I'm thinking of the scene where the alien pops up uh, behind Newt. Well, and like the- it's like that's like is is that if people are like that's just dumb action, I'd be like, I don't know, that's kind of freaky. Well, look like, at Terminator know, compared to is. Terminator like, Two. That's kind of what Cameron was good at, right? Like he took his own Terminator One, which is literally another like a Halloween movie. Yeah, it's a right? slasher flick, basically. It's a slasher flick, basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, to where Terminator Two is what he did to Aliens, and that was made everything bigger, more action film oriented, and you know, lighter in tone and stuff like that, which is exactly what he did there. And he well, did and, the same and, thing to and Rambo. There's chi- and there's a child mm-hmm. at risk. There's a child also. Yeah. At well, yeah. Like in both, family. in both of those films, but like, and most people don't even know that he, he wrote the story treatment for Rambo too. So mm-hmm. you have the very similar thing happening in Rambo too, that happened in those kind of instances too. He took the basic idea, but then put him in a different setting, gave him a girlfriend and all that other shit who literally lives long enough just to say, let's get together Rambo. And then she gets shot. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, it's true. It's true. Rambo but it's sequels no. are in, were weird. Rambo Two is so hilarious <laughs> later on in life. I loved it as a kid, but I watch it now, going, "Yeah, now I see what all the critics saw." <laughs> <laughs> I just love, love it. Back in I love it for its cheesiness, but it's like it's this so is a great. bad movie. Very really. unnecessary <laughs> movie. They, they have to try really hard to get him into the plot. Honestly. It's a good. One. <laughs> it's just it's such a cle- like it comes off like a satire. 
It's why Hot Shots yeah. Part Two works so well. Because yeah. <laughs> it was already on the point of being a farce. <laughs> and they even got John Crina in Hot Shots Part Two. So <laughs> <laughs> but no, I don't discount the horror elements in Aliens. It is because oh, it no. is coming off of a yeah. horror movie. But James Cameron knew he was never going to replicate Alien. Yeah. So he knew he had to make it like, well, yeah. what do you go from horror? Huge. You go to action. Well, and huge so epic and and a bigger one there, so, it, it's just like it was just like with terminator 2 like you said you can't just recreate the, the first one and, but well, then he, he kind of did but <laughs> well, in, in a way but i feel like the terminator in that one uh is like it's a different type of threat and different type here's of my point so it's still watch it's terminator crazy. and watch terminator 2 back to back terminator 2 is literally the same script scene for scene Beat for beat. The only difference is now you have Sarah and, and the new good Terminator in the role of uh, Michael Bean. And you have John Connor taking the role of Sarah Connor. That's it. That's the only well, difference. Well, and our they even have the different. same fucking line. That's just it. That's what I'm saying. Even yeah. the same fucking lines in almost every scene. Like down to the come with me if you want to live everything <laughs> like, well then it's well then it's very impressive how it's if it's so similar it yet feels it different it's very different though because but you have a okay, lot of differences i can point out here's my point too. okay yeah, we get to see that, john right? we, we see sarah connor in her regular everyday life for the first few minutes of the movie we see john in You're his right. everyday life for the first few minutes of the movie <laughs> she takes off on a motorcycle he takes off on a motorcycle yeah. she ends up at a dance club he ends up at an arcade that's the only thing that's different instead of a dance club it's a mall arcade Everything from there, it yeah. plays out exactly the fucking same. And then yeah. in, at the end, the same thing. They're in a steel plant to get at the end. It all <laughs> ends <laughs> the same way. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess I guess what I get at when I'm trying to point out. It's just bigger. Yeah. No, you're, it's just you're all right. bigger. You're right. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not even saying you're wrong <laughs> with it either. But like uh, like creating the liquid metal thing. Like, you know, that, that concept. It just feels is, different enough. It's, yeah. It's different enough. And the, the fact that we're watching this, we've seen Terminator 1. So the audience watching. Like I, I assume most. People oh, don't, don't get have, me wrong. You know, I'll you say that Terminator Two is a better but, movie than the first movie, right? Like it's right. Well, no, but I, I guess I'm getting at this is the mindset I, for most people that watch Terminator Two is you know the events of Terminator One, so it's so I, this is what I'm saying. Cry. This is what I'm saying for like when we're watching it, we're expecting like we were thinking, oh no, the Terminator. Instead back. of the sex scenes, though, not we get male thing. bonding scenes. So, okay, because, there's a difference. <laughs> so because well, I, it's like I feel like the the, the that watching the first film helps helps the second film. It, it, you can watch it on its own and it's still really good, but watching them, the first one helps support the second one because yes. of what you know about it. That's kind of what I was getting at. Well, Cameron knows that, good like, like that. Yeah, it helps. He, he did a good job with the second film. I'm not going to, and, and that's, that's what I mean with aliens all. as yeah. well. Like the, the prior knowledge that we have of the stuff helps enforce what's good with the second one, which is, is kind of obvious, but there's a lot of films that don't do well at translating the first one to the second one. So I don't know why I went on a tangent with that. And <laughs> in both cases, you also have John and Sarah making the same arc too, right? They go yeah, from kinda, non-believer yeah. to believer by the end. That's true. To leader by the end as well. Mm -hmm. right yeah. you know yeah. you've got the whole like scene where sarah's like telling reese get on your feet soldier and all that shit and stuff and you got a very similar scene with john and his mother you know and yeah. shit like that it, it is it is like a mirror you put the two together yeah you know you're now right now that i say it you're gonna be like <laughs> you, no oh, i know shit, you're right. right i'm already i'm already lining up the scenes like no you do have a point but yeah, the cop you, shop scene is also just, in the movie too but it's the skynet scene I, I just say that means a lot to a director. Yeah. Then, I think where they can take a, a, such a similar setup or and such similar things yet still make it different enough. Very different. Uh, I feel like well, it helps when you got another 90 to a hundred some million dollars to spend on it too. That's the big difference there. Well, well yeah. that, but I, I feel like, I feel like other directors, if they're trying to do the same thing, even if it's for their own movies, like mirror the, the thing, try to do it similar. I feel like most will not do very well. The only other time that I feel like it's been done this way, the same ish, but different was gremlins too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not seeing Gremlins two yet, so See, <laughs> I still think there's a chance you might like Gremlins two for the reasons you didn't like the first one. 
I would I, I would venture on to uh, uh, say similar to Evil Dead and Evil Dead Two with Sam Raimi basically remaking yes. the first movie, but now he's got a budget. So and it's funny. <laughs> yes, and it's funny. So it's he making it fun similar. of itself. It's exactly. very self aware. Exactly. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So I would say that was, was like there's even a that. scene where they make fun of the rules in the second film. Mm -hmm. Like it even gets so meta. I think I told you this, Rick. At one point where they literally are making fun of the bad reviews that the first movie got. They have Leonard Malton reviewing the oh, first movie yeah. in yeah, the movie. That. Yeah, you told me about It's that. like, how much more meta can you get than that? And then the fucking gremlins kill him. Like, I guess I'd be <laughs> curious. Him, what but he's... he's like, I'm wrong. Guess... It's a 10. It's a 10 when he's getting attacked. <laughs> I guess I'd be curious what his criticisms are of the first ones in the movie. It's like, Warner Brothers just <laughs> released for some reason gremlins. <laughs> <laughs> this movie is yeah. disgusting it's full of gloppy creatures that take over a small town on christmas eve and he doesn't get to finish much more than that and the gremlins pop up behind him they're going blah 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 yeah, shut up <laughs> shut up they, they they strangle him with some film yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah they just pop up like this the, the second movie's like gremlins just took over everything yeah. like including the movie like, itself like, yeah yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we'll move on. Uh, Please, we've been way too long. Yeah, we, tan we tangent. We, we, I think we're going to switch a lot many of times, but, yeah. but I think oh, this man. next one we're going to hit. <laughs> yeah, let's is... let's go ahead and get into the baseball. Yeah, <laughs> we, we had a couple of short episodes for a couple of these. So. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll go ahead and show mine first because I know you got a little more. So I'll just go ahead and pop up uh, mine real quick. You want to pop up yours real quick? Well, I got mine same thing you got. And I like that because I can hold on my. Thing. I should put it on my file cabinet. My magnets are in my file cabinet. I'm debating on it. I'm like, should I take them off and put them on the fridge, or so I'm I mean, not I put them on the Blu-ray. Yeah, but... yeah. That's uh, I'm. I'm still nervous over that because it's like, like I told you, it's like I've always told. Oh, that's not going to affect that. Life. I know, but nah. it's like it's in my head or whatever. But I yeah, I, I know you got the uh, some other ones to show. So I'll show mine because uh, I got. Well, the, we'll talk about the first one. Yeah, the there VHS. you go. It'd That's the only intense. thing I wish. I do. I do. I don't mind this steel book, but I wish it had the original poster art because yeah, that is yeah. the horrible DVD. Yeah. Yeah. I got the Blu-ray version of that. Yeah. I got. I don't need all these. I really don't. I probably should could get rid of my DVD and Blu-ray now. Well, no, I can't get the Blu-ray because they don't come with the. What pisses me off, oh, yeah. and I told you this. Oh, you got it. Oh, cool. I don't have that cover. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's the same special features. It's the same back. Yeah, this back's yeah, exactly yeah. the same. I just got that. But cover. I want that cover. God damn it! <laughs> How'd you get that cover? I don't know. It's just when I ordered it. That's the way it came. Because I know it. Oh the other man, one look at the like one I got. Whatever. Yeah, and it looks like your other one there. Play up here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks yeah. just like your DVD one. Because I had the old DVD that one of you got, but it also had a slip cover and it had astroturf and shit on it. Yeah, I couldn't I find it. I remember that? Yeah. I remember that one. And then, of course, you know. Well, I think I gave it to my kid. That might be why. Yeah. It's, it's very bad. This deal was deal was rum. <laughs> oh, I love this fucking movie. And I mean, I Great guess before movie. we get, get into the actual movie, have you seen it, Rookie? I totally forgot to watch this. Oh, I, I, I finished loser. two other TV shows off and watched these uh, my two picks <laughs> for the, this week. So I totally forgot to watch Major League. You should have gave him your digital copy, dude. At least oh, then we I know you would have watched it. I haven't used it. I can give it to him. I haven't used it. Because I think I have it on digital from the Blue Ray. Ooh, who's still yeah, missing, I think. I don't know if yeah. you know that. Yeah, the, Somebody stole the Joe Boo and they've never been able to find him. <laughs> <laughs> they probably died. Yeah. <laughs> it's very probably. bad to steal Joe it's Boo. It's very bad to steal Joe Boo. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, I could probably give it to him because I think I used the Blu-ray, the digital copy from the Blu-ray, so I don't think I need to. I was just mostly copy. kidding because he always watches shit digitally, but I mean. <laughs> I That's true. Okay, first, my like only gripe, now. my only gripe, about this is they don't have the original 2.0 soundtrack on here which i think is it even on that dvd i don't think it is let me look here real quick they uh, have not had that and since it's original originally came out i don't think it's got english 2.0 and dolby Digital that might be the original version or it's just a fold down i'm not sure but i i've been coming back around like lately i've been coming a bit more of a purist at least when it comes to the stereo tracks because for some reason, the 5.1 mixes just feel a little too modern. They take out too much of the background noise, which was, mm -hmm. it, to me, just, it hurts the, the, the sound field of the picture. Um, so I was hoping this would have a 2.0. It doesn't. But the picture looks amazing. I would give Paramount, considering what they did to King right? Kong, they did, 
they did the opposite here. This fucker looks like this looks great on 4K. Like it's fucking great. vinegar syndrome did it or something, man. Like, like it looks amazing. <laughs> I don't know who was in charge, if it was the director or what, but they made sure it didn't get overly DNR'd or needed or any of that shit. It's got a nice yeah, it just some reason sometimes I like to have the old original stereo track. It just it resonates differently. It resonates like the sound, but oh my god, this movie looks amazing. It um, does. Great grain structure, good clarity. You can read some shit that I've never even be able, been able to read on the Blu-ray before. Um oh god, I mean that's the, the only downside is they don't have the fucking 2.0 stereo track on you. What is it with you, Paramount? You used to be really good about that. That's why I said I'm pretty sure it used to be on the old DVD. Yeah, it looks like it is. It says uh, English 2.0. And I uh, think it's the old version because they used to carry them over back in the day. For some reason, they quit. Um, But yeah, no, it, it looks amazing. It sounds good still in the 5.1 mix. Don't get me wrong. But, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, But yeah, no, I, I can't say how good it looks. Like so far, this might be one of the best catalog studio releases this year oh like I, I agree with you. i couldn't um, when i was is, watching it i couldn't believe it it could use some more new special features mm -hmm. <laughs> that's for sure yeah <laughs> these special features are like 20 years old now um but uh especially considering they're supposed to be working on a new movie um it would have been nice to even have yeah like charlie sheen is supposed to be yeah coming I didn't back know that. i didn't know that <laughs> Yeah, well, Morgan Creek is trying to make a sequel to each and every one of the few properties they have. But, I mean, this is just an endlessly quotable film. <laughs> just um, a bit outside. <laughs> Sorry. It's just, it is. When you said that, I just, that always pops in my head. One hit? That's all we got is one goddamned hit? <laughs> Can't say goddamned on the radio. Ah, oh, to hell with it. Nobody's listening <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, you got anything you'd like to add nope <laughs> i don't call him the best color man in the industry for nothing <laughs> exactly that's my bats and i've been cut already i gotta <laughs> got i know you and i have a very special place for this movie for two reasons it is like the perfect marriage of ohio and wisconsin mm -hmm. because you have you know, um, the the team, of course, being uh, the Cleveland, uh, Cleveland Indians, Cleveland Indians, and it was all shot in in mostly state uh, the old county stadium in Milwaukee, and you have, of course, Bob Euchre, yep. who I believe still to this day <laughs> does the Brewer announcements. I mean, he doesn't do the whole show, I don't think anymore. I think he just does a, a few innings, but. Uh, and he's like 90 some years old. Right. <laughs> Funny fucking guy. One of the most hilarious guys you've ever seen before. And I never got a chance to meet him. I came really close to meeting him because I actually worked for a radio station where one of my main jobs during brewer season was to run the brewer games. Mm. So if we, we would get free tickets to brewer games and if we get, we go, we'd usually get, since we're one of the radio stations, we usually get it back, you know, pass mm -hmm. or whatever. We generally would get to meet bob and a few of the other guys and stuff so that really sucked that i missed out and never got to meet him but uh yeah no like so that has a special place for me because i used to listen to him constantly even before i worked at the station my dad being a brewers fan would turn turn the tv down and have bob playing in the background on the radio oh that's crazy that's so like you know because bob was just the voice of the brewers to us mm -hmm. you know so yeah you know, and then he's on fucking Mr. Belvedere and shit like, yeah. whoa. <laughs> yeah. And then he's in major fucking league. And yeah. it's like, and he has all the quotable lines in the film. It's hilarious. You know, you know, what's funny about that is uh, not uh, our uh, Marty Brenneman, who does the red voice of the Reds, who was the voice of the Reds. He's retired. Mm -hmm. I bumped into him coming out of a Walmart. And it didn't register to me because my dad goes, hey, that's Marty <laughs> Brenneman. And I go, who the hell's Marty Brenneman? Brenneman. Right oh. beside him. He was standing right beside me. And I was, and, and then after I said that, I goes, oh, wait a minute. I know who he is. And it was already too late. He was already in the Embarrassing store. Embarrassing moment. <laughs> yeah. It took me Because I completely forgot who Marty Brenneman was in that moment. And then I'm like, holy oh, shit, that's the voice of the Reds. <laughs> and he was just like right there, right beside me. And I made an ass of myself. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, but no, I get where you're coming from because Bob Euchre uh, is it's it is funny though, like how he was the voice of the the Brewers and all that. And then he was on Mr. Belvedere and this, and he does have the best lines in the movie, considering he is the color commentator of the film. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's just a, it's an incredible movie uh, coming from Ohio, and to me, there will always be the Cleveland and Indians to me. And I think this movie is one of the best examples of like a baseball clubhouse baseball type movie you can watch. That's so accurate from what I've heard and understand. And uh, it's a small piece of like Ohio history and I enjoy the hell out of the movie. Such a good movie. And you can't go wrong with the still book. The post game is brought to you by Christ. I can't find it to hell with it. <laughs> <laughs> we actually would hear it. We, we had a tape. <laughs> I wish I had a copy of it. I fucking wish I had a copy of it. Of all the outtakes of Bob and his uh, various uh, co-announcers over the years when they would do the, because after the game, the thing would, the feed would still come to us, but we'd shut the feed off to the, you know, out broadcast mm -hmm. and we'd have to record from there. Cause then they would do highlights for the game, October 7th, you know, whatever, blah, 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 blah. Right. It was a nine inning stretch, blah, 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 da, 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 da. fuck. God damn it. Start again. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Three, two, one. It was a great stretch today. Blah, blah, blah. Come out and ah, oh, fuck. It was Jones. Not that son of a bitch. Cock sucking motherfucker. So we got tapes of just that kind of shit through the whole, like just a half hour of Bob Euchre and these other guys just fucking blowing takes. It's hilarious. Shit. <laughs> and I guess funny. it's commonplace for us and other stations to have done that at the time. But like, yeah, yeah, we'd get one and be like, yep, there's one for the tape. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and after when I, by the time I was there, Bob didn't do that most of the time unless he was flying solo that day, which is very, very rare. Yeah. Um, but like, yeah, so like, yeah, I was usually the other guy doing it. I can't remember his name now, but like, yeah, but anyway, no, I yeah. was always kind of cool. And, you know, like I said, he had all the best lines, but uh, that is cool. That's cool. It's cool. But I mean, uh, uh, this is it's just a fun movie i mean it really gets you in that spirit even though i don't really watch a lot of baseball but like you you come this time of year you're like this is something you throw in uh for the spring and baseball and everything and it's uh it's really just a fun movie and and uh that's amazing i, I love that story tom that was a good story <laughs> um he's not gonna get this one unless he's got a missile up his ass <laughs> <laughs> Oh, if you did, exactly. And you, I mean, we like talk about a cast: Charlie Sheen, Tom Barry. That might actually be from the second one. But I can't remember. <laughs> <now>. <laughs> uh, speaking of, speaking of, there you go. No, go ahead. Go, go right on. Well, I mean, you want to jump into the second one already? I mean, there's still I, some things we can talk about. Yeah, the first we can talk about movie. the first I mean, one here first. Of course, you got Wesley got... Snipes and his big kind of debut. I mean, he had done a few things, but. I mean, that, yeah. that was his big major, major role, major league. Yeah. Yeah, major. Um, and he was the only one, of course, who was too good to come back for the sequel. Um, yeah. I, tried, I think he was shooting. I think he was shooting Passenger 57 at the time the sequel was made. So <laughs> we'll get into that a little bit more when we get there. But, you know, Tom Berenger's great in this. Mm -hmm. um, you've got uh, Charlie Sheen, probably one of his best roles ever, yeah. I would imagine. Um, Dennis Haysbert as uh, Serrano is great. Oh shit! And I was gonna grab it, and I forgot. I actually have Roger Dorn's fucking autograph. Oh, you have um, Corbin Burnson's autograph? Yeah, I got Corbin Burnson's autograph, and he autographed the picture of the three of them well, for me. Cool. And I wish I had had the money because he actually had jerseys there too. Oh, I'm that's so awesome. upset because but he wanted like fifty or sixty bucks for the jersey alone. I was like, oh, fuck! Well, I he is Roger Dorn. So I know I I didn't have the cash, so I was like, fuck. <laughs> You know, but I wanted to really bad, you know. Um, yeah. And it was a Dorn jersey, so like, it was really cool. But, uh, you know, so you got those guys that are great. Um, and, of course, you even got, uh, um, oh, what's his face Dennis who plays? Haysburg, Dennis Haysburg, uh God, there's so many. Um, what's the, the guy? Their coach is awesome. He's awesome in the movie. Oh, James Gammon, yes. James Gammon, he's, yes. Uh, he's great. How would you like to coach for for the Indians. Oh, I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> I <love that. laughs> 
I got a guy on the other line about a set of white walls. I'll get back to you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I just love it because like everybody else is sort of like jumping on it. Like, yeah, I want to pay for it, even though they suck. And he's just like, this guy's dead. <laughs> then take him off. <laughs> yeah. Half these guys are retired. This guy's dead. <laughs> it is one of the most funniest fucking film. I tell you, like, I don't know if you expect it to be that funny, but also it's got that it's got that charm like Revenge of the Nerds. Yeah, um, it's yeah. I've seen some people say it's a lot like Bad News Bears for adults. It is, but it's a very a very good look at uh you know ball club life. Sure, mm-hmm. there's a few things in it that are inaccurate or they they know are tech like okay for instance Serrano running around the bases with the bat would technically be an automatic out. Yeah, but they let yeah. it slide for the yeah, movie. The, yeah, you have to throw the bat. There's a few it, things yeah. like that, for instance. But like, yeah. other than that, it's fairly accurate as to what it's like being in a ball pen. And I mean, I grew up around softball, so I mean that I can relate to at least mm-hmm. in that much because my dad coached a lot of women's softball and played softball himself. So I grew up around a lot of that kind of shit. Um, so I see a lot of that, seen a lot of that camaraderie and that kind of talk, and you know, the locker room talk is it's been called over the last few years. Yeah. Yeah. And that's probably the one thing that's mainly missing from the second and third film, but we'll get into that maybe a little bit more. Who wants to sacrifice a live chicken? (laughs) We can't have that happening. We'll have people puking puking. and shit. Yeah. Yeah, What's the name of the other co or the other pitcher? It's Percy something or others. Oh yeah. That that guy. What is his name? Uh, Norton is is Edward Norton. Eddie Norton is his name in the movie. I know that Um, because I always remember because, but I'm trying to remember his name. He's got a, a, a woman's name is his first name. Let me see. Like Percy here, or something uh, like Chelsea that. Chelsea Ross. Chelsea, that's it. Chelsea. Chelsea Ross. He's hilarious. Yeah. Up yours, Joe Boo. Joe <laughs> <laughs> A little snot, a little Crisco, KY. <laughs> you put snot on the ball? <laughs> Someday you, you will, will too. Do. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got a fastball like you do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's great. He's hilarious. And the sad thing is, he looks like he's almost fifty, and he was probably only like in his uh, early forties, or maybe even like yeah. 30s. I know. <laughs> well, that's the beauty of it. Is like the ball exactly. players, man. They aged like that, man. Especially when you hit that hump. It's and you're so just like, perfect. Yeah. yeah. Aren't you going to lead us in prayer? You know, not all of us are savages like Serrano, Serrano. over there. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> and they also deceive and then like if you notice like when corbin bernson gets up he waves a fart when he walks yeah. away when he tells him. yeah i'll be in my office yeah, yeah i'll be in my office <laughs> so, so. lord please guide us today in the- <laughs> jesus christ serrano <laughs> <laughs> I have to wake up bats <laughs> <laughs> can we start this again shit <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's such a damn good movie. It is hilarious. It is great. And it's got a lot of heart to it, too, because it, like, it can get real serious and like the love story with Rene Russo. Uh, and Tom I think you stuff. can go get him now. <laughs> <laughs> you threw at him on purpose. I did not blow me. Ah, fuck you. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, my, one of my favorite is the Wesley Snipes thing is when they put him outside in bed and he wakes up outside. He's like, shit, we <laughs> started already. <laughs> shit, I've been cut already. Yeah. Already. Yeah. And he just takes off running. Get him uh, a uniform. <laughs> I love that scene. <laughs> uh, every time you hit one of the pop up, I want you to give me 20 push up. <laughs> he, he wants me to do sit ups if I miss a. Miss a ground ball. He comes out with the fucking contracts. Like it says here, I do not have to do un- any unnecessary calisthenics. What do you think of that? And he throws it on the ground and pisses on his couch. <laughs> like, I love it. I love it. Or what time when he, Tom Badger's going to talk to him? He's like, the ball was out of reach. What do you want me to die for? And he goes, yes. What you die for? It? Uh, That's what you're none of this old lay bullshit. <laughs> what do you know what do you uh think about the alternate ending because that's uh, interesting um i don't think it works i think they made the right choice um it it doesn't make a whole lot of sense i mean it does but it doesn't it's like it it works better with her wanting to move the team 
right? Mm -hmm. And I mean, she could have done more throughout the film if she really wanted to, but I mean, it kind of works best as is. Because if you have her like make this turn at the last minute, it is kind of a well, that don't make no sense. Well, then why did she do that? Well, then why did she do that? Well, then why did she do that? Yeah, she's being a little rough there, you know, like eh, because a lot of the things she does do wouldn't make sense even if she was low key trying to yeah you because know, her explanation in that scene is so stupid yeah like she could it, the, there was no reason for it it makes no sense otherwise and you kind of need that antagonist right yeah and and that was a common fun. thing and you you see it even to this day when there's talks of a team moving people freak the fuck out mm-hmm. you know so i mean that's the thing is and I guess it was a legitimate thing they looked up or based on because uh, the twins were about to do that at that time, if I remember right. I think it was the twins, um, but they didn't end up doing it. Uh, but yeah, like it was like if they fell below a certain percentage of uh, attendance, they could move so, the town without yeah. the without uh, being in breach of contract with the c- state and the city or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it was it was actually this thing that they found and they used it as part of the plot and then it makes no sense to go back on it yeah because at that point like yeah you can see why this showgirl would want to move her you know her money you know her piggy bank to another more sunnier yeah. more setting sunnier, when she's especially yeah. she's from l um from las vegas to begin with so yeah yeah i mean it, it, it does it, like you said it doesn't work and once you take away the antagonist and then try to make you feel sorry it kind of it just doesn't play because it's like well, the whole movie, you're they're like she's doing this to him, they're doing that to him, and then, then like they're trying to fight it back against her. And then she comes in and she's like, you know what? I knew if I did this, you guys would win, and we wouldn't have to move. And it's kind of like, eh, no, that you need that person to hate. You need that. Person <laughs> did I say move the town? I meant move the team to a different town. town. Sorry, John. <laughs> yeah. But so yeah, that's like for anybody who didn't know the alternate ending was that she comes in and she tells uh, the manager there, James Gammon, that um, she wasn't really the bad guy all along. She I knew, knew she you did could it. do it all along. Yeah, I knew you could do it. I knew you had it in you. And it's like, no, that doesn't work. <laughs> no, to me, that's yeah, and it undermines the whole idea that she is totally miss. Like that's the whole thing is that that takes away a little bit from this ragtag team actually finding their you know their niche and that's kind of like this movie was kind of like moneyball before moneyball Mm -hmm. um i don't know if people see the resemblance there but it's like yeah i mean they took a bunch of players who were considered shit but you had a guy who could actually see the good sides of them and what needed work as opposed to these guys had gotten shuffled through the system and just dumped down to the miners and fired otherwise you know Mm mm-hmm you know so like yeah i mean it kind of just works in that sense and once you take that element out of it like oh i knew the whole time you know like bullshit or he'd be a fucking coach somewhere else right. like that's the whole point <laughs> is he's a fucking triple a coach you know exactly. that's part of the joke of this whole thing is yes you put together this team that was never supposed to win they were never supposed to win and they still did that's the whole fucking point of the movie yeah because they, they in spite of you if anything like you know that's the best scene in the whole movie when when they fucking discover that's the whole plan and Tom Berenger's like, well, there's only one thing left to do win the whole fucking thing. Right. You know, like right. that's, and you're just with that whole fuck. You're like, yeah, you know, yeah, you're with dude. them, you know? <laughs> yeah. 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 So um, it betrays the audience too, at that point. Cause you're mm-hmm. like, well, wait a minute now. So then, okay. It's cool. They won, but eh. It makes no sense. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Eh. Yeah, it's like, yeah, and you need that. You need that antagonist. You need that person at the end where you can, like, when he's up there clapping and he looks at her, the guy that's with her, and he goes, <clears throat> and he looks at her. That's you. <laughs> that's the audience because you need yes. that and to say, like, in your face, they're doing it without you, uh, despite of you. And so, and then to have her say something like that would just it defeats it, like you said. Well, um, this movie also influenced baseball going forward too, especially with the 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 closer coming in with a rock song, obviously the yeah. wild thing, wild thing, all that kind of stuff, you know. So mm-hmm. that was always kind of a thing that they uh, influenced, you know. Yeah, I I, I agree with you, Brian Bartha. I, I 
think is that what they are now? The Cleveland, yeah, the Cleveland Guardians? Guardians. Oh my god! Yeah, they bow down to the mob, and it's just I'll, I'm going to call them the Indians no matter what. Um, as far as I know, Charlie Sheen is still acting. I don't think he's acting in a lot and doesn't Last get I a heard, lot, but yeah, he's supposed to be making a major league movie. Yeah, that's uh, that's new to me. Um, I don't know if he's going to be actually playing ball. I'm assuming he'll probably play the coach role, but that's what I figured since the where he's at now in his age and everything. Um, which is funny because he's from Ohio as well. He's a big Cincinnati Reds fan because his oh, family, yeah, his the Sheen family. Um, uh, the well, I know Estevez, he's a ball player, but yeah, yeah, yeah he was a ball player. They lived in uh, Ohio for years. I want to say Dayton, maybe Dayton, maybe. But he was. They were. They're huge Cincinnati Reds fans. They're huge because that was uh, where they grew up for a long time until he moved to California. Or somewhere. Well, somehow, that was the thing about know. the movie is they wanted guys who were actually athletes. So like all these yeah. guys actually did play some sort of sports or ball themselves. The only one who didn't believe it or not, or really wasn't big into that much sports, was Wesley Snipes, and <laughs> he just looks athletic. I don't know yeah. if you watched the making of or not, but believe it or not, the other actors in that one scene where he beats him in the race had to slow themselves down, and the reason they did it in slow mo is because it looked fake otherwise. Because I guess Wesley Snipes is slower than shit. <laughs> really? I wouldn't have That's what the, the, the director thinking? said. Yeah. yeah he's like, he's funny. slow as hell. He's like, <laughs> he looks good running, but those other guys were struggling trying to make, you know, make not him look good. Him. <laughs> and, and the only way I could make it work was in slow motion because otherwise it just didn't look good. But yeah. like, yeah, we do a good job of selling this idea that he's, you know, this fast kid, but. He's like, yeah, Wesley was athletic and stuff, but he's more built than he is fast, right? Yeah, like, yeah. He's, he's like more you know. muscular type guy. Yeah. 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 Well, that's interesting. I haven't watched that yet. I don't think. But, but yeah. yeah, like, uh, believe it or not, uh, Charlie Sheen could actually throw like 80 mile an hour fastballs. Yep. yep. He he was a ba- he was a pitcher. Yeah, he was pretty good. And he was an eight man out too. So, uh, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah, he's uh, they're from Ohio. He was a pitcher in, in school, yeah. Yeah, which is fun. Which is I do find that funny because he was from Ohio. I I can't remember how long they were here, but I know he was in high school here, and they they like they consider this their second home, Ohio. And mm-hmm. it was it's pretty funny that he was playing for the Cleveland Indians in Major League, <laughs> and, and he's a huge Cincinnati Reds fan. So <laughs> they come to the game sometimes. You can see him out in the uh, you know the stand sometimes. Well, the director was just boasting about how he was just you know the best part of it because they didn't really have to teach him anything because yeah. he came pre-prepared knowing how to pitch mm-hmm. and that's all they needed is, you know, to him to look good doing it more than anything. So, yeah, mm-hmm. but uh, uh, no, then we got the sequel. Yes. <laughs> I know uh, Brian Barth's been asking here and there about the part two and part three. We're going to get to it, Brian Barth. Cause here you go. Now this is released through Sony, believe it or not, because Morgan Creek owns the distribution on all the sequels not the first film kind of like with a lot of their other films for some reason they i don't know why they do that but uh yeah warner brothers actually released this originally it wasn't even paramount uh and now it's on sony yeah weird anyway (laughs) they do own ace ventura though so they got smart at some point (laughs) <laughs> they're like we're gonna own the first movie too yeah we're gonna get that one um but anyway i don't hate this movie i know a lot of people do I don't. I don't hate it either i don't hate it either. i do feel like yes it wears that pg too hardcore they should have went for a pg-13 i don't know why they didn't mm-hmm. and on that note i don't even know why this one's rated pg-13 this should be pg this actually is pretty close to pg-13 that's one of the reasons why i don't mind it so much there's still some shit in here that i'm surprised they got away with on a pg this is probably one of the last pg movies where you could get away with because this was like what 94 even though it's supposed to be the next year it's fucking five years later um but (laughs) but yeah i remember when this movie came out it was kind of like took you long enough um but yeah is it as good as the first movie oh fuck no but it has some great stuff in it like i love the crack at wesley snipes having omar epps play him as the action star now yeah um (laughs) yes it is kind of like going back to the whole terminator thing before it is a total reversal on the first film right everybody has their issues in their life now so they suck again yeah but i don't mind it you know and i mean one of the best scenes is when the coach is like you know it's always a leg thing or an arm thing 
or heart attack. <laughs> Who used heart attack, coach? Me. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's in the hospital and he's like, yeah. And the nurse is like, oh, my God. And he's like, I love this British shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind supposed to be listening to the game. I think the biggest complaint I have about the the second movie is that I don't like that they start off by saying they lost the World Series. Because, like, it's sort of, you know, because we talk about, yeah, they won the championship at the end of that. But Mm -hmm. but then also kind of works in the movie because they got to be sucky again to get back to it there again. I was going to say, I don't know if anybody expected them to win the World Series, and they didn't have to win the World Series. All they had to do was get far enough to get attendance up That's and true. winning the championship was enough i think to where she wouldn't be able to move the team right, right. so like and then the, the thing that i don't like about the movie is pretty much that you've got dorn buying the team then having to sell it back to her yeah that whole kinda, bit is kind of yeah. stupid it's just kind of yeah. and i don't even know why it's there right you could just have her again being in that same position where i mean you're already remaking most of the first movie as it is Mm-hmm. So you might as well just go with that. I mean, the only time I think like the movie slows down is really the Ricky Vaughn side story stuff. Even though as much as I like Ricky, like his love stuff, his love story stuff, we didn't mention this much in the first film. It does not work like Rene Russo. And uh, yeah, it doesn't have the same connection. No, they don't have the same chemistry. Like the Rene Russo, like you feel that chemistry in that mm-hmm. scene where they fuck in major league. Yeah. Right? Like, that's a pretty hot scene. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, I mean, you can tell t- her and Tom Berenger definitely. And she even comes back for a cameo just because she obviously had enough fun. Yeah. And, and they and have a pretty decent scene. Then, yeah. Right? I mean, yeah. Yeah. So it's all like kind of cool with them, but like, at least they didn't rehash their shit. I'll give them that much credit, but sadly just the stuff. And I'm glad they went, you know, a different route, but just the actress they picked for both roles with the whole, you know, I like the idea, the concept. I just, there was no chemistry with either of the women yeah. uh, and Charlie Sheen. Um, so yeah. I don't know who picked the women, but very poor choices on both ends. As far as chemistry, none whatsoever with him. Uh, the concept's okay though. Yeah. Um, they kind of like, did they like, cause like he was supposed to be like the new Tom Berenger now. And you know, he was, they're sort of, kind love of. Story again, sort of, because Tom Berenger takes over as the coach and yeah, you're right. Yeah. Like they're trying to do and It's different, right? Like, and I like how it plays with this role of him. Cause it is an interesting, cause this does happen to players all the time where they, you know, they come out hot and then they, they didn't give a shit before, but now they realize, Oh, well, if I want to sustain this career and I want to have a career, I got to do this and change my image and, yeah. you know, res- preserve my arm and shit like that. So him kind of psyching himself into this mode works for the movie right. i just wish the women they picked were a little bit more interesting because <laughs> both actresses suck what I'll happened to the chemistry test <laughs> yeah the chemistry is not there at all yeah. uh, at all um, um real quick before we get into more i want to say thank you anime night 1992 for becoming a new youtube member channel member here appreciate you thank you very much sir uh, but yeah, uh, but I don't like you. I don't really hate the second one. I do think it's a fun watch. And plus, like we talked about earlier, it's better than a lot of the crap we get today. So, <laughs> you know, it's not, it's not bad at all. It, it, there, yeah, there are we get parts Harry Doyle movie. back. We get most of the, uh, and we, yeah. the new cast members aren't that bad either. I don't mind, you know, the, 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 the Japanese guy. Oh well, yeah. The Japanese yeah. guy is funny. Him and Serrano. And Rue Baker's actually kind of funny. <laughs> Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but we do we do lose uh the Chelsea Ross guy, so he's not in, in the second one. Um But yeah, it's not it's not bad. I mean, yes, you do go from an R-rated comedy from the 80s to like a PG movie in the 90s. But like you said, it's not like you're not missing a whole It's very lot. hard PG though. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. And who knows, maybe they filmed it uh you know, I think the they may have, and they kind of edit it down. Yeah, I could be wrong, but yeah. So I mean, there's still a lot of things in there that feel kind of adult, like the Playboy magazine bit. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, there's a lot of pretty racy jokes still in the movie. Um, even got this the part where he's like, you know, if you he's got all the names for his ball, like the Terminator and the Exterminator and all that kind of shit. He's like, mm-hmm. well, if you hit it, you, you get a piece of it, you can name it. And he's like, I'll call it the Masturbator. 
<laughs> like, I mean, yeah. yeah, it's not quite PG thirteen, but it's close enough nowadays. Like, yeah. yeah, like it feels weird watching the film, and then to see the the third film just a few years later get get slapped with a PG thirteen, and that thing is tame in comparison to the first two. Mm-hmm. But uh, I mean, you want to go ahead and get to the third one since you uh, since you watched we all could. Three we could we um, could. <laughs> There's three of them. Yeah, yeah, I don't dislike this wonders. film, but I hate the cover. I don't know who, yeah, who decided to do this shit, but this looks like the Good Times version or some shit, but it's released by Sony, and, you know, I mean, they at least did the poster proper, even though this is not my favorite poster in the world. Mm-hmm. You know, it's kind of plain, but at least it's a poster compared to this, because the actual poster is just this. I'm yeah. surprised you don't have the VHS of these two. No, I don't have those ones. I on thought VHS. you would. No. I'm just kind of surprised. Um but no, I don't hate the third film. Now, the third film is, as the title says, Back to the Miners. Um, it's about a minor league team, um, and it's coached by uh, Scott Bakula. And Corbin Burnson returns, um, and so does the guy who plays Serrano and Bob Uecker. Um, And we get a Takaka, Takaki Ishiyabi Wabashi, whatever character he plays in the movie. I always forget his name. From the second movie, yeah. Yeah. So you get a, a few return, but you get some new uh, characters as well. And I kind of like the film. It's got a nice charm to it. Um, it's funny. It's a little more slapstick than the first two. But I and you got Ted McGinley as the bad guy. Oh yeah, it. yeah. So I mean, it's got a really decent cast, and you know Scott Bakula is really likable. I mean, and even though he wasn't in the first two, he kind of feels like he probably would have run into a lot of these guys and run in the same kind of circles and yeah. shit back in the day. No, so, I mean, like he's the Tom Berenger type guy. Kind of like it almost was written for maybe for Berenger, yeah. but it didn't, they couldn't get him again or something like that, which I can't believe. But either way, Scott Bakula actually works pretty good here. Yeah, like he works it. pretty well, yeah. Because I like the idea that he's kind of a, a pitcher at the end of his, you know, run and... Mm-hmm they ask him to coach this team. And then the, the whole kind of clutch of the movie is, you know, um, it's a minor league team of the twins and Corbin Burnson owns the twins obviously as well. Mm-hmm. Ted McGinley who coaches the twins um, and him get into a little argument <laughs> over the teams. Mm-hmm. So they set themselves up for a, uh, you know, little guys versus the big guys thing. And it works. And you also have Walton Goggins in a great role, too. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Young Walton Goggins in it. Um, he plays the hot shot, new young up and coming uh, player, you know, all around great athlete. So and he, he's good in it, too. And uh, I mean, it's it, it, yes. Is it more childish and family friendly than the first two? Absolutely. It's like I said, I don't even know where it got the PG-13 from. I'm like watching the movie going, how is this PG? I could have swore it was the other way around. Growing yeah. Up. I could have swore unless they did it wrong on here, but I, I, yeah. I, have to go look, I looked it up and no, it's accurate. I think like the most offensive, even though I wouldn't even call it offensive. It's like the most thing they do is like, they keep telling Serrano he has no balls. You have no marbles. That's in the second movie. That's in the second movie. I thought that was in the yeah. third movie. No, that's in the second movie. By the third movie, they're the twins. Remember? Oh yeah. That's they right. Leading each other out they to the bound. Like yeah, 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 yeah. We don't know what he's doing, yeah. but it's dumb as hell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's been a while since I've seen the third movie more than the second movie. But yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. I remember now. Yeah, they're the 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 samurai twins, or not the samurai twins, but the whatever the fuck they're called, the warrior twins or whatever. Because yeah. they, because he taught him to you got to balance Buddha with uh, warrior, so he picked the. Mm-hmm. Uh, Joe Boo to go back to, so he had the balance again. So yeah, it's true. It's true. <laughs> yeah, the second movie. That's the fun thing about Serrano is he's having that crisis of faith. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky Vaughn in the second movie had to decide between Connie Conehead and Doctor Elsa Snyder. Is that who that chick is? She plays the Conehead daughter in the Conehead I movie. Didn't know that honestly, because I didn't uh, ever think I've ever seen that woman in anything. She's else not that. Yeah, head. she's not that good. She wasn't even as good as the original actress who played the daughter in the SNL skits. And I didn't yeah. think she was all that great. The chick who plays Alfalfa and shit. Yeah, never remember yeah. her name. Um, but anyway. She's like one of the only original cast members I can never remember her fucking name. <laughs> it's true, it's true. Yeah. 
but yeah, no, I don't have a problem with third movie as, as at all either. I think I don't have a problem with any of them. Yes, you're never going to top Major League. That is just a fun movie. It's, it is a product of his time, and it's it's rewatchable a hundred times. It has that R rating edge to it, and uh, then the second one was maybe too many years too late, and they lost some people and then whatever. But it's still like a fun movie, and then the third movie is just you know. By then, it's just like yeah, this is just a fun baseball. You know, it's a baseball movie, and it's fun, and you can kind of feel like it's still it is set in the same world. And some of these guys, of course, would have moved on and became bigger and retired, and then gone back down to the major or minors. You know, it works. I, I don't have problems with it, so. That's how I feel. I have seen Mr. Baseball with Tom Selleck. It's, yeah, I it's, like it's that one. Movie. Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah. That's a fun one. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, there you go. And if you got anything else you want to say on Tom, go ahead. And I think we'll move on to uh, Rook's final pick if he's still awake. <laughs> No, I really, I'm sorry. I'm, yeah, I was going to say we kind of went on too long earlier, so we should probably kind of move along. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, no, it's I, always fun to get the baseball season kicked off. Yeah. Uh, with, uh, some fun 100%. And I do highly recommend the 4K of uh, Major League. If you can yeah. get it, it's well worth it. It looks beautiful. So, uh, but to you, Rook, since you only got one more, you might as well go ahead and do your last pick. Uh, what do you got for Taka us? Tanaka is his name. Jesus Christ. Taka Adel. Tanaka. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, last week I did Old Yeller as my pick. And with that, there was a second movie that came along with it called what? Old what? Yeller Sequel Savage Sam. And it's funny because of how they put it on the on the disc here, on the case here. Like the original Old Yeller. So if you need to have it's Old Yeller, of course. But then the title of the next one is Old Yeller sequel, Savage Sam, which no human on the planet has watched until I just watched it. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I've never I, seen it. I didn't even know it existed. Yeah, which is which is why it's funny because, like, I don't think they sell individual copies of it because I, I was like, oh, Old Yeller. And I didn't know there was a second movie on it until I bought it because I just saw the case, you know, it says Old Yeller, you know, whatever. It's, okay, right there. There's no split cover. Of Savage Sam, it's in one three three one. It makes me wonder if it was a TV movie. Well, it's kind of funny you say that because the way that it feels, it's like Savage Sam feels like it's structured like a TV serial or something, an episodic. Like there's as if there's four episodes into one little movie. Essentially, it, there's like a few things in the movie that I could give it credit, but it's mostly dog shit. Uh, yes, that was on purpose. Uh, wow, <laughs> nice pun on words. So, so let me let me walk you through this film, my friends, because nobody's gonna watch this full spoilers for you. All right, so <clears throat> Savage Sam, the song, for example, uh, in the old yeller, there's a little old yeller song, you know, best god darn dog that there is. Uh, Savage Sam has a worse song to me. It, it starts off with just doesn't start off very good with the song, and they're showing they're showing them you know chase an animal or something. It's like okay, you're trying to emulate that, but it's just weird. The dog is completely different. People would assume it'd be the puppy from the end of Old Yeller that we're following up with, but no, it's a completely different dog. Old Yeller is referenced once in the movie, and I'll get to that a little bit later. Uh, we follow up with Arliss and Travis. Travis is the older brother. Arliss is the younger. Arliss is the younger one. Uh, they're both a little bit older. Uh, the little shit is a little shit. The whole movie. Uh, he's like in that area, that like twelve year old range. It looks like he's in almost uh, some, somewhere around there. Uh, Arliss and his voice is, is breaking all the time. Come on, Sam! Like his voice will crack all the time whenever he's yelling or doing something he yells a lot in the hey, movie it's puberty man yeah well i know but it, with how often he yells it ju it's just worse you know he doesn't talk normal for most of the movie so he yells and it screeches louder when he does it, it, it his the parents are not in the movie it's just the kids they're, they're off doing something else in this and travis has to watch over his little brother we don't need uh, no parents <laughs> uh, yeah he, he's making some food and uh he's harlos is being a little turd he's just a turd like the whole time to an annoying degree just extremely annoying degree uh he's milking the cow 
and he doesn't want to work, but he okay, he's milking the cow. Some barn cats come around, he squirts them with some milk, and then the stupid dog comes in and freaks out the cow, almost causes like a little stampede on their farm practically. And then the little boy gets all angry that Travis was ruining his fun and then throws rocks at him. Uh, it was one thing when he was like a little tiny kid throwing rocks, you know, you're gonna you're trying to kill my dog, you know, that that type of thing. But this is like an almost teenager kid. He might be 10, but I can't tell. But still, he's older. He's older. But by, you know, he's double his age at least. So throwing rocks is, uh, you could do more damage now. Quarters him in the bathroom. Their uncle stops by and talks him out of it. That scene was kind of funny. Because he's like, yeah, here's my gun. You want to kill your brother? Shoot your brother. And uh, the, the whole point, <laughs> he, was teaching him a, he was teaching him a lesson to not do that. Which, that was kind of funny. I was like, oh, that's okay. And then uh, the dog go, goes off chasing uh, so a bobcat and soda and Harless goes after him a little bit later too. After Travis is trying to make him do some farm work, but him goes and chases off the thing. Travis goes and before he goes after Harless, uh, Cersei from the first one comes back. I uh, remember the fat dude that comes in and is like, you know, oh yeah, I got Elizabeth, my daughter, and whatever. Th that guy comes back and so does Elizabeth. And it's just, it comes off like, yeah, hey, you remember how all those things in the first film were like all these jokes? Those are here again as well. I'm a fatty who wants to eat food. I'm check what you're cooking. And it's just like, okay. <laughs> uh, Elizabeth and Travis go to track down Harless and the dog chasing down the bobcat, uh, skipping around some more yelling at each other. Some Indians come on by and they're like, oh, look at that white lady and two white boys. Perfect. And they take them. Uh, their mule from the first film is there too. It's surprisingly like, an emotional character for Harless. I I don't know. Uh, I don't know why. This movie barely has anything to do with the dog, by the way. Like, <laughs> this is the, the get the corner get captured by Indians. The little turd is just, yeah, you stupid, you stupid red devils, assholes, blah, 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 blah. And put, putting them a fight the whole time, being a little bastard. All right, okay, fine, all right. One of them knocks out the dog. And he's like, you murdered my dog. <laughs> Uh, his voice gets so annoying and grating after a while. And here, again, I'm just saying, if you were to watch it, you'd you'd know what I'm talking about here when you hear him screaming all the time. And then I don't know that they hang. They're pretty much captured with by the Indians for most of the movie. And at one point, they think that they're eating their mule, and they start talking about, "Oh, that mule was so good. You remember that time when uh, the mule had to haul you and old Yeller." That's the only time he's referenced in in regards to him mourning the death of the mule. They mention Old Yeller once in the whole movie. And I think they say Savage Sam like a thousand times. Or they don't say Savage Sam, but they say Sam. Sam, get him, Sam. You got it, Sam. Sam's a good dog. Oh, Sam. Oh, Sam, Sam, Sam. They say his name like so many freaking times. <laughs> it drives me crazy. I'm like, I know they, they say, you know, it's a dog. It's an animal. You'll say its name sometimes. Sure. But usually it's not too much where you notice how much they say it. My God, they're just praising this dog. And it's like, this dog's barely done anything. In the other film, it, like you see, there's the dog has to kind of act in a way. It has to like be on camera by itself and show emotion of some kind. It's like the dog's acting. And this, it's like they just cut to the dog. It's fucking, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I, I'm just kind of like, why, why do you even have the camera on the dog? Like, you don't know what's going on. He's like, I rah, 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 just barks all the time at things, but there's no character to the dog, which is what's more disappointing. It's called Savage Sam. It's you'd think that'd be important, but no. And the uncle tries to save them from being uh, captured and whatnot. The little turd is pretty much what I call the little brother this whole time. He keeps on fighting with the Indians all that he can. Uh, they're, Travis is worried that they're going to have their way with Elizabeth and he and her starting to <laughs> form a romance. And okay, that's like one element that could be explored in some kind of way if they knew what they were doing, but not really. Um, oh boy, Travis uh, ends up getting away uh, and meets up with this uncle that were following them. There's some jokes. Uh, we... we be so lame. <laughs> um, You're done. He's like, I'm done. I'm just the movie. They so <laughs> the they, they end up they end up ambushing the Indians like seven times, and I think finally they do it. And 
uh, Cer- there's a funny joke with Cersei where he is, he's like, you know, oh, let me shoot. I, 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 he's, he's just like an old retard, pretty much, is, is how he's presented <laughs> as. And he was an idiot in the last one, but I mean, God, like, he's just like even more doubled down dumb in this one. And they're like, oh, you didn't do, he's like, oh, I did a shot. Uh, from like a thousand miles away and then there's a point a little bit later wink wink 15 minutes later he's trying to save his daughter from being taken away and then he from very far away with the rifle you know shoots a guy and like wow that was impressive and then he just passes out for some reason just like faints after he shot the gun and i don't know we just fixate on weird stuff throughout this whole movie i don't get why and okay the little boy is saved the girl is saved woo uh, we're going home and and they and then they have the little turd recant events to Cersei. The events that we've seen, by the way, for like a good 45 seconds, like in his, you know, hey, you should have seen this. You wouldn't believe this. Oh, Cersei, we did this and done that. And then engines were coming and blah, 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 blah. blah. I'm like, oh, my God, this kid's just telling us the, what we saw. Oh my god! And then and then it fades away like it's gonna cut to a new scene, and they're further along on their way back home. But nope, he's still talking, and oh, we're we're still showing this. And then after a few more seconds, thank God, it cuts away to Travis for a minute and Elizabeth, and it's like you know you can ride your own horse if you want to, if you feel strong enough. She's like, yeah, sure, when I'm strong enough, and holds him a little tighter. It's like okay, that's a cute moment. All right, they're bonding finally, whatever. And then the. The stupid bobcat from the beginning comes around again, and uh, Parlis and the dog chase it again. Oh yeah, they had to rely on on the dog for tracking them. It, that's his use in this was he's a tracker, I guess. But they don't really do much with that either. So who cares? Don't watch this movie. <laughs> don't, <ever>. watch. <laughs> don't watch this movie. You will just be like, what the. F- just, the hell just is this? It, just the keep the it, point uh, of this. Old yeller and have a good cry. <laughs> yeah, well, the, it's like it's okay if you want to make another movie, but I feel like Old Yeller had many different substantive points it's trying to make, and it was simple with how they did it. I mean, just simple things with the dog. He just like you know, he's like the, Travis hangs the meat up in the for in Old Yeller, and he's like, you know, if you eat this, I'm gonna shoot you, and he lowers one of them down expecting it to eat it and so he can justify in his own mind shooting the dog and the dog doesn't and it's like just small things like that shows a little character with the dog and then compassion man's best friend all those things the use of the dog and then in savage sam it's just like he just had none of it and there's a little bit just a little bit of like travis type of growth as still being a man but not really it's not focused on it's not presented in any sort of good way as old yeller was this at best would just be summed up as a pointless old Western serial where the beginnings when they're at their farm is for one episode. The next episode, they get captured by Indians uh, the next episode. They're with the Indians and they're trying to find when Travis is trying to find them. And then they're, they're finally get freed from the Indians and go home. Like, well, so serial. I did a little that's how I it. background for you. And surprisingly, okay. this isn't a backdoor pilot. Like I thought it was. Because it sounded like it from the way you were explaining. Yeah, it. yeah. But instead, it was actually a theatrical release. It bombed. Yeah, it was trashed by critics, but <laughs> apparently, it was. Yeah, it, it, it's it's awful. There was no uh, th- this whole this thing came with a second disc for bonus features, only about Old Yeller. Not one pipe, not one mention. Even when they mentioned the films that the two actors, the two brothers, are doing uh, with all these, they. Like, they don't mention Savage Sam as like a movie as a movie that they do together. <laughs> we don't talk about Savage <laughs> they, Sam. They mention all they mention Shaggy that. Dog. They mention uh, Swiss Family Robinson and all those other ones when they talk about it. They do not mention Savage Sam uh, when they're talking about this stuff. Like it is a. It is I a literally had mark. no idea it existed until you brought it up. Last yeah, week. I didn't. Neither yeah. did I tell you. That's should. what I've heard from everybody. I'm like, wow, this is really a. It's it's put next to Old Yeller in the DVD because. I don't think anybody else would ever find it. Otherwise, they go. Oh, that's a, that's on there. And it's on you the same like disc. Teen Wolf so too. They get put rid on of it. with Teen Wolf because otherwise nobody would buy it. Yeah, I bought it separately. Me too. Sadly, <laughs> from Shout. <but laughs> yeah, I, I don't. Hate just, I wanted to see the excuses on the special features. <laughs> yeah, I'll yeah. say it. <laughs> 
I, I learned pretty much what I needed to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, now you know. And so, thing was, I was gonna maybe I was hoping that maybe you'd be like a nice, like surprise gem of wow, you know, it's a sequel and it's actually pretty good, not as good as the first, but it's still pretty good and has its merit. Totally wrong. Just, now you know, and nobody's ever heard just, of it. Well, well, that's the, that's the thing. I would think everybody would know that it's bad, but nobody's even heard of it. Like, I feel like it's one thing when people know, oh, the sequel that don't want, like the Disney sequels, the direct to TV ones or the direct to DVD ones. Like, a lot of them, everybody knows about them. Everybody knows they exist, whether or not they're good. This is just a nobody knows ever was a thing. That, that's the first time I think I've heard of that. Or it's just a, a sequel that has never been mentioned before, <laughs> but it existed somehow. <laughs> you say that critics. It rated it. Maybe. Are you sure they weren't bots? Because I don't think anybody watched it. It wouldn't have been <laughs> bots back in the day. It wouldn't have came out in 1963. It would have been actual film critics. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're not going to find nobody really talking about it because you're the only person that's ever seen this movie. Yeah, I guess so. I, I guess. Who would talk about it? I don't know. I think even the nostalgia critic at one point was going through Disney movies all the time and the uh, Sure, he's gone through all of them by now. I don't think he goes through Savage Sam. <laughs> I don't think he mentions that. Nobody anyway. knows it exists. They tried to erase it from history. And, and, and imagine if like somebody like him did talk about it. That would bring that would be like, what what? You know, this huge channel talk about a movie that nobody knows. I, I love it. It's called the Old Yeller sequel. And that's part of the title. That's part of the title. Well, they had to get, they could call it Old Yeller because the, the, the dog was gone. So they just like, well, let's make a sequel. Just call it Old Yeller sequel, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Again, they only mention Old Yeller one time. And it's when they're mourning the death of the donkey, which actually turned out to not be dead. They ate something else. I don't know what it was. It was another horse or something else. They thought they're eating the donkey because it wasn't in the group of horses that the Indians stole. And when and when he sees it, it, and that was like Harless, he was like, "Oh man, it helped us out so much, and it's even helping us now with our strength as we eat them." And then later at the very end, uh, he's like, "Oh, it's in the cornfield! Wow, get out of here, you stupid ass donkey!" And then he chase, and then that's what like begins the chase, uh, and then the bobcat. Around, and I was like, "The fuck was that?" <laughs> anyway, <just, laughs> yeah. Anyway, so that's that movie. Uh, okay. Don't recommend it, y'all. Uh, right. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Now you know. Now you know <laughs> now you the know. movie that nobody watched. And knowing is half the battle. G.I. Yeah. Joe. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's it's almost like if I didn't watch it, does the movie exist? You know, but now that I watched it, it does exist. You know. And it's it's a poor movie. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Well, Tom, let's go to you and then we'll go to me and then back to you. And that should uh I think that should do it. So what do you got for us for this pick? Okay, well, I stuck with the sports uh, shtick for now because um, Kino Lorber recently put out North Dallas 40 starring Nick Nolte and Mac Davis. Um, and I'm pretty sure I saw this way back when. Nice. Um, but I really I've had never seen this one. Vague memories of it. Um, but seeing it now, I can't say it's aged all that well. It's okay. It looks great on 4K sounds pretty good um the cast is decent enough it's an interesting film um and 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 the plot overall isn't horrible it's loosely based on actual events actually um mm -hmm. uh on the cowboys actually and a player played for him um and a few players have played for him actually uh but uh there's just some bits about it that just kind of make me go how does this film feel both like a big studio picture and also cheaper than shit at the same time. Cause like there's the, the, the football game scenes, there's literally nobody in the stands and they don't even really hide it that well. <laughs> and it's like, where's hmm. the people? We didn't have so money. You couldn't to just get that. some extras. I mean, I, I don't understand. Even if you just move them around every time you're changing the angle, I mean, coming off of like major league and knowing all the stuff they went through and how people like just showed up. People and well, in, in the major league movie, they actually had no problem with people yeah. in Milwaukee showing up for them and they would all show up every night knowing they had to wear the same clothes and all that kind of shit and everything like that. So like, 
I don't know why it was such a problem for this, but uh, overall, I mean, I can recommend the movie for the most part. It's not great. It's good. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess the book that it's based on is even more salacious than the movie itself, but uh, it's just kind of like an earlier look at, I guess the NFL was really pissed about this movie when it came out, but uh, I mean, a lot of it now doesn't seem like so like racy or salacious. Mm -hmm. It just feels like another, a lot like a Friday night lights or a, you know, the, the, the program type movie. Mm -hmm. Cause I mean, yeah, there's some fun elements to it, but otherwise it has a lot of underlying negativity about football and that's kind of what it is because it's just kind of like how do i put it? it's a very much more darker edge to it than i expected it to be um it feels a lot like mash the way it's kind of that set 70s up. darker cynical darker type 70s vibe. cynical kind of vibe yeah but not as light as mash um so i mean it's just the way it's shot and the way uh, ted Katja, for how we say his name, is the one who actually uh, directed it. But uh, I guess they left a lot of stuff out from the book that some people were upset about. But uh, um, yeah, it's just a lot of racy shit that goes on behind football and who, you know, takes the brunt of the blame for things and drug use, both on and off the field, um, you know, and how it's okay yeah. for them to get shot up with all kinds of drugs to get them to play on the field, but it's not okay to smoke some pot. You know, things like that are a big part yeah. of the story. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it, 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 yeah. It, we've seen this shit a million other times, but Nick Nolte's good in it. Um, Mac Davis, who was actually a country singer more so than a, an actor, actually does a really good job in it. Um, I, I can, like I said, I could recommend it, but I mean, I'd probably wait for it to go on sale if it's not something you're too sure about. Yeah. I mean, it's no Debbie Does Dallas. No, not, not, not <laughs> by far, but it does take place. In Dallas, exactly. So, see, yeah. So North that's Dallas. one I've never actually seen. So I, I was curious about that because I saw Kino putting that on 4K, and I, I do like Nick Nolte, Nolte. So I was kind of curious about it. Um, yeah, so, but I guess I mean the biggest problem, like I said, some people had with the movie is how much it tames down from the book. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and it was, this was a 70s movie too. It's like, cause yeah, they, you know what they did in the 70s, how much darker the movies were. Yeah, well, like, for instance, like, uh, how Nick Nolte meets uh, his love interest in the film, you know, she's groped on and manhandled a bit by one of the other players, and he gets involved. Well, I guess in the book, she's practically gang raped. So, Dang. Like, <laughs> Dang. Yeah, so, like, yeah, so there's just an example of how the movie kind of <laughs> tamed things <laughs> down a bit. And there's a lot more other psycho like there's a whole nother bit in the movie that really kind of threw me for a twist and i was trying to figure it i'm still trying to figure out what the hell happened or how it happened or went down or what exactly happened because there's like a couple players on the team and one of them's really religious and there ends up being like a threesome a three-way with some other older gentleman watch and it's like another thing in the movie that's really weird and like there's some <laughs> homosexual stuff that happens during it that gets out it's like it's really, or something it's really really fucked up <laughs> it's just like i didn't know I was where did this, this come movie? from all of a sudden but like yeah there's just some weird shit in the movie but i guess that kind of weird odd just shit happening out of nowhere really adds to the kind of realism in it in it but it is one of those very realistic gritty 70s movies definitely even though i think it was made in 1980 no 79 you're right that there you go it was weird so i may i'm I'll probably hold off on getting that produced by the producer of halloween of all things too really erwin yell blondes yeah hmm. that's that like that's like a weird put thing to put on that movie for like the football movie produced by one of the producers oh, it doesn't say movie. that but i mean he is that I mean, he did. Is that good? But that's or Frank kind of Le weird. Blondes. It is not. Er what is it? Did I say Irwin for some reason? Frank Blondes. I think. Yeah. Is it the same guy I'm thinking of? I think so. I think probably it sounds familiar. Yeah. I just want to be sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's him. Fury. Maybe. Maybe not. <laughs> uh, maybe it's two different guys. Maybe it's two Blondes you never know um uh, anyway yeah but next? i think 
yeah, I think I guess it'd be my final pick, but I think I'll probably wait on that a little bit <laughs> because I was always I was curious, and now I'm kind of be like, eh, I'll, I'll give it a beat <laughs> before I go to that. I didn't hate it. No, it doesn't. I mean, it doesn't sound like it's a bad movie, but it sounds like something you got to really be in the mood to watch. No, Erwin Yablons is a totally different guy. Okay. Oh, they're a totally different guy. Maybe they're brothers. I don't know. Maybe. I can't verify. My bad. I just recognize yeah. the Yablons name. Hey, you never know. They could be related. A lot of producing people, you know, were related in Hollywood. Um, but no, no, it doesn't sound like it's a bad movie. It just sounds like it's a movie you have to be in the sort of a mood to see for like a like a drama football type movie like that. You know what I mean? Um, but I guess we'll go to my final pick. And it's a Shout Factory movie. Uh, so I know you love Shout Factory, Tom. Uh, it's a uh, school spirit. It's one of their exclusives to their um, to their their thing. You know where they we only made fifteen thousand, fifteen hundred of these, and you better I buy. I don't think it. I got that one. I wasn't going to buy this. I wasn't because I'm done buying those Shout Factory exclusives because they they fear missing out crap. But they're having a Roger Corman birthday sale, and this is a Roger Corman produced movie. Uh, and it was it, it goes for thirty bucks on there. It was on sale for fourteen ninety nine. So I was like, shit, I'll I'll get it because I like Roger Corman and I remember seeing this on late night cable when I was a kid. So uh, it's school spirit. It's funny because I mean, Ro- Roger, this was one of the first movies that Roger Corman made with his New Horizons, New Concord movies because originally he had um, oh, it was New something. I can't remember it, uh, company, and he sold it, and they wouldn't distribute this movie. So he literally created a new company to distribute movies after he sold it. So this is one of the, one of the ones he uh, he said. You know what, Tim Hayes? It might have been USA Up All Night. I saw this on, but I remember seeing it on cable. But this is a fun movie. This is the type of movie you get a pizza. Speaking of pizza, Rook, you get a pizza and you drink a beer and you watch this movie. This is a good old school 80s sex comedy. Uh, This guy named Billy Batson, believe it or not, his name is Billy Batson. Uh, uh, Shazam. He's this college kid. You know, he's like the college Casanova. He's trying to get in the pants of the like this, like the smart girl, the preppy girl, and uh, she wants him to get a condom. So he goes out and gets a condom, and he ends up getting in a car, uh, car wreck, and he dies. But he comes back as a ghost. And uh, so he goes back, and it's really weird because, like, he's really not a ghost, even though he's a ghost, because he, like, can, can turn it off and on. Like, he can just wave his head, hand over his head, and he goes in, like a ghost invisible, and he can do things, or he can wave his hand over his head, and he becomes a person again. It's it's really that's like that's the simple pro, pro, you know thing of the movie. Uh, so he goes back because uh, he's supposed to go to heaven. His uncle who's died has come to like supposed to be taking him to heaven, and he gives he runs away from him. And so because he's trying to get laid, he's trying to get this chick, and uh, so that's where the story picks up. And he's trying to get her in, in the process. He ends up falling in love with another chick that comes over that you know because he realizes who he really likes. And uh, there you got the college campus of the, like these kids that are like, they're called the hogs. They have the party kids at like the party and he's like their leader. And then you got the fancy rich kids and the Dean, uh, the president of the school played by uh, speaking of uh, mash. I think he was on mash. Um, oh, what is his name? Got to find this. I just seen it. Uh, Larry, Larry Linville. He was on the TV show mash, right? Larry Linville. I believe so. Uh, but he's like the president of the school and he wants, he's bringing this woman over to give him money to tear down this building and build something new. And the hog kids that like the party kids don't want it to happen. And uh, so that's like the, where the story picks up. And uh, eventually, you know, he's got a, you know, I don't want to spoil it for anybody if you've never seen it. Cause this is a fun movie. This is a fun 80s, 80s movie that you more than likely, cause I remember what I remember mostly is a shower scene from when I was a kid uh, on TV. And it was edited on TV, so it wasn't, you know, I didn't see anything on uh, late, night, late night cable. Uh, and that's what I always remember. I always remember the scene where this guy who was like a ghost walking into this girl's shower scene and, and seeing these girls. But, of course, I wasn't seeing none of the, the bits of the girls, uh, which says is in this. But that's what I remembered, and I always wondered what that movie was. And then I heard Shout Factory was putting out this movie, School Spirit, and I was like, that's the movie. 
And then I heard it was one of their exclusive because they screw over the Roger Corman stuff. That's what I cannot stand because Roger Corman, you know, his family sold him a lot of the rights to Shout Factory and they treat his movie like garbage. They just, they don't do much with them. And it, it it's, I feel like it's very disrespectful to the Roger Corman uh, catalog. And so when it, but it came on sale and I was like, you know what? It's Roger Corman's birthday. It's 15 bucks and it's usually they're like 35 bucks. I'm buying it, I, and uh, it's a good movie. It's a fun, it's a fun movie. It's everything I remembered uh, from what I could remember of the movie. So if you if you haven't seen it, and if you want to go ahead and get it, I think uh, the Roger Corman birthday sale ends. What is today? The tenth? Uh, no, the eleventh now because it's midnight here. It ends today at the eleventh. It might be over already, <laughs> but so there mm -hmm. you guys have it. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They can't. They won't take my money no more. I know that so they won't take your money at all. So uh, later, Phoenix. Oh, and if you, uh, I didn't get to say later, Brian Barth as well. I know you left. Uh, thanks for hanging with us. Um, yeah, it's a good one to have in the collection. Uh, so I enjoyed it. It's it's like I said, it's one of those fun movies where you just want to get like a pizza, maybe a beer, and maybe some friends or something. Uh, it's a good time. It's it's definitely something if you grew up watching late night cable. USA up all night monster vision or just whatever, you know, like those old movies they would play late at night. If you, if you, if you remember it, you might like it because I just remembered certain bits of it. And I, and I was finally glad to see the whole movie in full unedited and everything. Uh, so it was a good one. It was a, it was a fun time. Uh, but there you guys, that was my last pick. And uh, so I guess we'll just, we'll go back to you, Tom. Cause I know there's not much to, else to talk about that. So did Rook have any more, or did he do his second one already? I think Rook. No, that's, that's it. Yeah, he's all done. Oh, yeah, son of the son of Sam. Yeah. Yeah. Son of Sam, Sam. Whatever. <laughs> son of Sam. Whatever it is. The dog was talking to him. So. Yeah. yeah. Probably what it was. I imagine um, when I was talking, you were just like tuning in every few like thirty seconds. Like, okay, so I went and took a piss. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't I like looked that shit up. Um. <laughs> All right. Well, I yeah, guess to I should have bought off, you I a got... copy of that, Tom. I should, if I would have known, I should have bought you a copy. Yeah, it's all right. I'll figure <laughs> out. Maybe Diabolical get it. Um, yeah. So I finally finished off the Kong movies uh, to kind of round things out here. So I watched Mighty Joe Young, which I've had on DVD for quite some time, but has since been released on Blu-ray with all the same special features, almost exact. Nice. Oh, wait, so the Disney was that a remake? The Disney one? I'll get to that. Uh yeah. yes, it is. So yeah, yes, this is the that. original movie from the guys who created uh King Kong. It's kind of considered the third film in the King Kong series. In fact, when I bought this, uh it came in like this trilogy set with Kong in a steel case and everything like that. Um but yeah, no, I like uh I like this movie very much. It's a really good film. Uh, I didn't know until recently that it actually lost money on its initial release. I didn't know that, but really? only like I a million thought it was bucks. Kind of popular. Yeah, it only lost like a million bucks, but I think they spent a little bit more on this one than they did Kong and Son of Kong. Um, but I'm sure over the years it made its money back on re-releases, no problem. But yeah, it's become a favorite, and plus it's one of the first films, if not, I believe, the first film that uh, proper that uh, um, Ray Harryhausen worked on. Mm -hmm. um, and it looks pretty good here. Not stupendous, but pretty good. Was it could definitely use no this is actually a warner release oh nice. um it's from a few years ago it's due for a new master so is kong for that matter but i don't think they have mm -hmm. the negative for the first one anymore i think they do for this and son of kong though um because they the, these two have never been uh tapped as much as that has but mm -hmm. yeah this is from back in 2015 and i think that's just the hd you know the same scan as this i think or maybe not. I'm trying to remember now because I did double check and I can't remember. <laughs> I think it might, if it isn't this, if it isn't a new scan, then it's definitely been cleaned up a bit. Cause I think there was rougher bits and pieces. I remember in the DVD because this DVD dates back to, I think 2005. I'm not, yep. 2005. So like, yeah, there's a 10 year difference. So maybe they did rescan it or they went to a better source. Um, I don't think it's the negative, but I could be wrong. Either way, it looks good for the most part. They even have the orange tinted scene in it. But for those who don't know the story, uh, 
It's about, uh, it's very much a King Kong esque story, but it's a little bit more family friendly. Mm -hmm. Uh, you have uh, a little girl who trades, um, she lives in Africa with her dad and she trades one day for a little gorilla, a little baby gorilla who ends up growing up to be this huge gorilla. Who's probably about two, three times the size of a normal gorilla. And, uh, one day, uh, uh, promoter played by the same guy from Robert Armstrong from the first two King Kong movies, but playing a completely different character, but very similar. Mm -hmm. Um, comes to Africa with a bunch of cowboys and, uh, they run into mighty Joe young. And, uh, he of course talks Jill, uh, the, the girl, the little girl now grown up into bringing mighty Joe to the uh, United States to have him be a part of the show, which she thinks sounds really kind of glamorous and stuff like that at first. But then after they were there, they end up in the U S for a long time and Joe's getting progressively agitated and, you know, things like that. And things just aren't going the way they had planned. She thinks it's about time to get Joe out of there. Well, of course, Joe breaks out and goes on a rampage, but you know, from yeah. there, uh, <laughs> I, I, I guess it's okay to kind a of different movie. No. because here's the thing. It sounds like you've seen the remake which I also watched. And yeah, I, didn't which, the I didn't know it was a remake. I, I thought that was, it is bad. not a bad it's movie. A, it's actually a yeah. really good remake. Actually. Nice um, movie. This is one of those rare occurrences that falls in that category where they did everything right in the remake and they modernized it in a way that works. And you have a lot of great nods to this movie, but it's not the exact same movie. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it sounds like you've seen it. So yeah. like you, you, even at the end, instead of having um, the Ferris wheel burning down and Joe having to save the little kid in this one, it's a, a, a orphanage with uh, um, burning down with the kids trapped inside. Mm-hmm. So like, I mean, there's very similar scenes, yeah. but it's not the exact same story, which I kind of like. And this movie has amazing effects. Um, uh, if I remember, was it Rick Baker who did him, I believe? Um, this is what he wanted to do with Kong, um, but they wouldn't let him because they wanted Kong to be more human. But he's like, I can make a, a suit that looks like an actual gorilla. And you'd be right. surprised in how much of this movie is actually physical effects. Um, but even the CGI looks pretty good for 1998. Looks better yeah. than most She-Hulk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man>. Way better. <laughs> but the difference in the story here is this obviously... Uh, Jill being played by Charlize Theron, her mother, she has a mother instead of a father and living in Africa and her mother, um, it it works with apes and stuff like that. And one night some poachers show up and, uh, sadly she gets killed along with Joe's mother. And that's where Jill and him have a bond from that point on. And then, you know, jump ahead years later and, um, the, the bill, bill Paxton comes in and, uh, He's like, uh, I can't remember what he is exactly, but uh, he gets like blood samples and stuff from animals. And so like, so he's like, he must be a research animal research guy or something like that. And mm-hmm. of course he sees he Joe and, tornadoes, of course. Yeah. He's not, he's not looking for tornadoes <laughs> anymore. That was too dangerous. So he decided to switch to, <laughs> Go to gorilla work now. I got you. But I mean, there's even that great scene where like Joe comes in the first time and he lets the, the cat go. Well, there's a very similar scene to that in the original, but then he ends up getting in a fight with the cat instead of just letting the cat go. So this movie, obviously, you can tell the big differences in the understanding of apes between here. And Joe is a much more sympathetic character here. Mm-hmm. But I was kind of surprised when I saw this in theaters for the first time. Because I thought for sure they were going to kill Joe. Because once he kills that bad guy, then it's like, oh, shit, you know he's going to yeah. die. Yeah. It's like, it's not like this one where he didn't actually kill anybody. And he get, got to live. And it has kind of like a sappy ending on it. This one really sets it up to where it's like, yeah, they're not going to let Joe live. Mm-hmm. He's going to end up dying saving that kid. And for a minute, I thought they actually did kill him. I was kind of surprised when he was alive in this movie. <laughs> well, Disney got balls now. Wow. Yeah, they got. Well, they would have had more balls if they killed him, I think. But uh, yeah, of course. Um, And I think it. I don't think it would have ruined the movie either. Right. If anything, it might have hit the whole point home a little bit more. If anything, it's um, almost off brand that they didn't kill him off because they killed sort of, but the it, well, they don't kill him it. in this one, but yeah. it, it would have been fitting more like with the Kong ending kind of thing. And in this version, like that's the thing is they're like after him hardcore. 
he kills that bad guy. Nobody really knows outside of Jill just kind of has her, you know, she's the only one who can really kind of verify anything about the guy, but that uh, doesn't mean that doesn't change the fact that the ape killed somebody, right? Like you're going to try to convince somebody that, Oh, the ape can differentiate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. You're going to (laughs) trust your kid with that. Mm -mm. (laughs) No. And I mean, that's just logic, right? Like, I mean, look on in a real world situation, if that were to happen, they're going to put the fucker down if he didn't die at the end anyway. Isn't so that story of Harambe. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Never been to since Harambe, Harambe. Thank you. I'm, I'm the meme now. <laughs> kind of funny how many famous gorilla stories there kind of are. No, but this Mighty Joe Young, this version yeah. does a really, 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 and I didn't even notice it till this time. I can't believe it. I kicked myself in the ass. And maybe I noticed it years ago and I just forgot because it has been a tick since I've watched this. Mm-hmm. Um, I've, I didn't notice there was a Ray Harryhausen cameo in it. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know that either. I'm like, oh, he's at the party. I'm like, oh, shit, that's Ray Harryhausen. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I always get the Mighty Joe Young uh, remake mixed up with, and I don't know why with the Rene Russo uh, buddy movie. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't that know one, why. I don't really remember that one being very good. Yeah, neither do I. <laughs> Which movie? Either, it's called Buddy, I think. It's, she has it's about uh, a monkey that lives with a like a rich family or something like that. Yeah, he's like her oh. she looks of him like a family member or whatever. Um yeah, but it's anyway, loosely based on a true story, I believe, but yeah, yeah. anyway. Yeah. That being said, no, Mighty Joe Young, um I don't know if you I think it's sold out now sadly on the Disney Movie Club cuz this was an exclusive. Yeah. Um and there's no special features on here, which is sad cuz I think I could, I, and I searched for it. I thought I had the old DVD, but I must. I, I, I have the old DVD. Let me get it. Is there any special features on it? I was going to say. I'm, I'm going to double check. Real. I'm going to double check. Real. There might not be. There must not be because otherwise I wouldn't have got rid of it. Well, as always, Harry and the Henderson. Oh, I like movie. that one too. Yeah. That's a good movie. That needs a Blu ray desperately. It doesn't have well, It a has a Blu ray. Yeah. It doesn't? I thought yeah. it only had a DVD. I'm gonna have to check into that because I always I have the DVD. I always thought that I never made a Blu-ray, so I'm gonna have to get the Blu-ray now. I still got a digital cold. That's probably no good. <laughs> I never opened the bastard. It still got dust on it. And this came out, and I'm gonna say I've had this for years. What the the code? Yeah, I'm trying to look at a date. 2014. This came out. I've never even opened it. I should open and watch it. I haven't watched this in a while. It does have a Blu-ray. The Blu-ray is $24, but it does have a Blu-ray. I'm trying to think if I have the Tops cards or not. I know they have Tops cards, but I'm trying to remember if I actually have them. <laughs> I don't know if I do. I think I do. I think I do. Oh, there you go. That's, uh, oh, no, that's a seller. One of these is yeah, got... Yeah, I like had it. that disc, so I must have got rid of it if I don't have it anymore. Uh, it does have special features. Uh, production featurette... The actual trailer. Demo. Why would I have gotten rid of it? Well, yeah, it doesn't. Not much for special features. Still a production feature. That's what I saw. How do I not have this fucking movie yeah. still? Blurry. It's blurry. Can't read this it. This is where I'm convinced. See, I'm convinced I've got a box somewhere that has DVDs in it that I haven't and, found yeah. yet. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> kidding. Because there's a bunch of movies on DVD that, because I used to separate my DVDs from my Blu rays. Mm hmm. And. I swear there's got to be a box somewhere or at the bottom of a box somewhere. Cause I know I should step. I, I wouldn't have gotten rid of it if it didn't have special. Features. So I didn't have this Blu-ray for very long. So. I mean, I think I'm in the same boat. Cause like you start moving out your DVDs, once you upgrade to Blu-ray and stuff and find the ones that you don't need or the ones you want to keep. And you kind of just lose track <laughs> where you put yeah, one. It's usually pretty good though. Forever. Yeah, things organized a certain way forever, and then you change it up, and now you can't find nothing. <laughs> I'm usually pretty good, though, at even keeping a DVD if all the difference is like a trailer or something, usually. There's yeah. a few I've kicked myself in the ass for because I thought they were the same and then realized later on they weren't, but I can't believe this would be one of those. 
Right. But maybe it was, but I'd have that or I'm, I got to dig deeper for it somewhere <laughs> because it's not on the shelf. So Tom's going to go into the media, the physical media archives to find them. <laughs> uh, I've been trying to find it. I'm, I'm convinced it's somewhere, but I had help for a while helping me go through some of my shit and it never was found. So we'll see. Crazy. That's, that's, yeah. Maybe but I, I gave it away. Yeah. I remember the Mighty Joe Young movies, both of them being pretty good. So I don't have complaints about them. Never did. Uh, but then again, much like you, Tom, I love monster. Well, I guess you can't say it's a monster movie, really. Mighty Joe Young. Big, it's a big animal. I mean, it, is, but it, isn't. it is, but it isn't in a way. But yeah, I love monster movies. So <laughs> well, <laughs> Joe, Joe has such a great personality, especially, I mean, in both films, but especially in the remake. Mm-hmm. I mean, he feels so real. They did such a great job of making him feel like a full-fledged character. Um, That's what's interesting too about these different ape characters, is like in in cinema. It's kind of what I was getting at. Like, there's a lot of different ones by now with the uh, gorillas and chimps, and they're all very like you can't go. Oh, it's the same one. Like, they give them usually enough personality, which I do like. I do like that they do that. Very yeah. good. Very good. I've not seen Rampage, so I have no idea how they have that gorilla. Even though it's a CGI, I know, but still, like, I, I have no idea how they characterize <laughs> that character. I've seen it. It's it's basically like uh, the Rock teaches uh, like is his friend, best friend. They do sign language and stuff, and then he becomes like a giant monster. <laughs> like it make more sense for the gorilla to be teaching him sign language or something? No, no. <laughs> teaching the Rock sign language. <laughs> It's not a bad movie. I actually have it on 4K. It's not a bad movie. It's just, it could have been better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you guys ever uh, see uh, MVP, Most Valuable Primate, that little section oh. of chip movies? <laughs> Where he plays baseball with Matt LeBlanc from Friends. Um, I, I don't know, actually. I know he does. The ones I know that's Ed. No, no, no. no. It, start, it starts off with, like, there's, like, a skateboarding, snowboarding, and I almost want to say hockey or something, but I don't know. No. Uh, he does like three different sports. Uh, I I know that. No, I don't think I've three ever seen sports. that one. I don't think I've ever seen that yeah. one. I, I, all I remember is like it's just like a chimp, and it's just kind of around, and it like there's it's in this one girl's house for some reason. I think she's deaf, and uh, it can speak sign language, and it's like it pours itself a bowl of Fruit Loops, and I, like, I don't know. I just, I just remember vague things. It gets chocolate milk out of the fridge at some point. It, it puts on a t-shirt and it's around. There's something going on with the plot, I'm sure. I, and, then he, and then he just sees people doing a sport and then learns how to do the sport. And he's pretty good at it. And like, like whoa, it's a chimp, man. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen those, Tom? The MVP movies? Mm-hmm. It seems not. like something that be like, oh. I, I don't know if they do. I don't remember if they're one any or two. Good. I think that around. they kind of came out around the time my kid was young, so I may have seen like one or two. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember I, I paying saw, that much attention to them. Yeah, I only saw them yeah, when I, I was young, so I don't all. remember much about them other than uh, go MVP, the most valuable primate. That's what I thought MVP stood for for the longest time. That's all they'd say. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you know hit, hit middle school i'm like oh most valuable player gotcha <laughs> dude why they called you the most valuable primate on the football team <laughs> I man? I don't but, no, no, in my head i'm like yeah we're yeah we're primates we're in the primate family no shit <laughs> that's how i thought of that like, Rock, yeah. you really are a rookie yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i learned a lot of things late okay <laughs> oh all right. Well, uh, th- uh, is that the end of the the physical media I, picks for today? I, I think, think so. I think yeah. so. Only three hours, considering that's not only bad. three hours. Um, yeah, I mean, we've done some shorter shows lately. Yeah. Well, th- this is the three hours we've done in a while. But uh, I wish I would have watched more. I just I didn't have a chance to. Uh, but mm-hmm. it's always a great one. I-, I love when Tom goes. I watched a lot because I know we're going to get a good show out of it because he's got the good stuff. Uh, so that's good. yeah, that's good. I mean, gonna, I get to do stuff too, but Tom, he gets to watch more. When he gets to watch more, it's fun. Oh, yeah. 
he, he brings the I, I feel like I bring the wild card of well, I will watch something that everybody knows and is waiting for what I think or a movie that nobody's ever heard of before. Usually what happens. Well, yeah, you you have those weird movies like Savage Sam. Who's who's watching that? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But thank you, Rook. Thank you, Tom, for hanging with uh, with me as always on the on the physical media show. To everybody out in the chat, I appreciate you guys. Everybody at home, I appreciate you guys. Thank you all for watching. As always, we will see you next Wednesday. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. How you doing? Uh, 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 bitches leave. Uh.